from the heart of Uclan, this, this is Pulse Radio. Hi, welcome one, welcome all to Story Corner. How are we all doing? I'm good. We are back for another week of Story Corner, your weekly episodes where we talk all the things about narratives, don't we, Kezia? Yes, we do, we do. How are you, Oliver? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good apart from a burnt tongue. Yeah, we just, what happened there? Because we, we played the intro jingle and then it just cut out, didn't it? It did, it did. Don't know why. You're on, you're in charge of the board, not I'm, me. I'm trying to be in charge of the board. It's so very difficult. Is, oh, it's Oliver's fault. <laughs> if things break tonight, it's all Oliver's fault. If you believe that it's all Oliver's fault, it's Oliver's then fault. please vote on our. That's going to be our episode question I, yeah, right there. There we I'm go. Putting we, never, it on. we never discussed that. No, we didn't. We had Should it. actually before we Should announce ask... announce the um, announce the new question. Should we talk about? The results Last of the old yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to let you, because you've been dying to do it, haven't you? I have been dying to do it, just because we had an argument. I say an argument. We had a discussion. Heated debate. Heated debate. That's a better argument. So, we had a, a heated debate on whether plugging someone else's work on our show was shameful or generous. So, I'm going to throw it over to our guests, even though we've not introduced them yet, because I want their view. Well, before I actually introduce, before I actually tell the results. Okay, maybe you should introduce them then. Because How about you introduce them? Okay, fine, guests? guys. We're, we're... <laughs> we have this argument all the time, don't worry. We, we, we have got this written down, I swear. You know, okay, we right. <laughs> <laughs> You're here with your host, Oliver and Kezia, on tonight's show of Story Corner. And joining us is the local Prestonian father and son rap duo, FMA and 12 Gage. Everyone give it up. Woo! Thank you. Thank well, you. <laughs> Some names, perhaps, yeah. So, yes. in our duo, we've got Matthew Bennett. How are you doing, Matthew? I'm cool. How are you? I'm wonderful. Awesome. Yeah? Yep. Awesome. Good. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> you need a new word. I don't care. I say awesome gonna... a lot, too. No, we, yeah. we oh, had yes. a count about the word awesome last week. I know, I saw it on the Facebook page. So, yeah, you need a new word. Yeah, well, I mean, he saw it on the Facebook page. That means all your hard work at social media is paying off. Well yeah. done. <laughs> Congratulations. And obviously duo is two, so our second one is 12 gauge. That is Callum Bennett. How are you doing, Callum? I'm doing good. You? Yeah, I'm awesome. Good. <laughs> How many times has Oliver been asked how he is? We, we, we don't know. It could change like, minute to asked. minute. It's, it's amazing because you'll ask me and I'll say, okay. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Kessie will ask me and I'll say, not that well. <laughs> and then Callum will ask me. He'll be like, yeah, 30 cool. seconds away. And I'll go, whatever. Cool. <laughs> I'm awesome. And then Elliot... Give a shout out, Elliot. We haven't even asked. Oh, hey, okay. how's it going? Okay, so everyone, you might remember Elliot. Elliot is the Story Corner's voice actor that we keep inviting back and he keeps accepting. Because we don't have anybody else, so please <laughs> wow, help man, us. We do, we do make you no, we do love them. you. We do love you, Elliot. But yes, we do. We, we kind of need some other voices as well. <laughs> so, guys, back to the show. Back to the show. Back yes, to the show. So, poor Elliot. <laughs> we love you, really, Elliot. So. Throwing our question out to our guests, that's all three of them, not just, you know. Do you think plugging someone else's work on our show is generous or shameful? Uh, generous. Obviously, because mm. it's us. I'm not going to say shameful. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, allowed yeah, to yeah, do yeah. whatever you want. But hang on it before you answer. Oh, I just did answer. My, my <laughs> side, yeah, but we're gonna, I can edit that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, that's edit any <laughs> <laughs> But maybe, maybe just think about it. Is it not shameful? that you're doing your own plug. It's generous as of us, but... But it's not his own plug, because he's on your show. Yeah. There go you go! go, on. go on. <laughs> no I, love you, I love you, you're amazing. <laughs> yes, he's the best Elliot. voice actor in the world. Yes, Elliot! Elliot. Elliot. Yeah. And he only doesn't like this, because he says it's shameful, and I say it's generous. I really? think it sounds better as shameful. It's, it's generous. Why, what's your logic? I don't have one. But, so, Callum, um, Callum, what is yeah. your view? Generous well, or shameful? Mm. Well, as an artist who really wants recognition from anyone, I've got to say it's generous. <laughs> yes! But I can also see from a listener's perspective how if you were to listen to it and you kind of had just repeat plugs and repeat plugs, how it could be she- seen as, you know, oh, they're just cashing in, they're just getting people. There we go. Yeah, that's a, that's a On the great. fence. Very diplomatic. However, that, is however, a, that is an Oscar Van Ruffland answer. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. So Thank you, you might not know who she is, but she invented this show. Oh. We didn't come up with the show. We just we you just hopped on the bandwagon. Yeah, I kind of. Oh, she kind yeah. of went. Kind of went. Would you like to host? And I'm like, yeah. And then about three, four weeks later, we went. 
Oliver, do you want to join us? <laughs> and then I jumped on. Awesome. <laughs> and then here we are, a few months later. But yeah, um, we, we put we, the vote on. We put the vote on, and Oscar gave us a very, very, very diplomatic. Yeah, diplomatic answer. Diplomatic answer that and didn't actually answer the question. It just went. That's what the show's for. And, like, I, and I put a gif with a cat walking on a fence. <laughs> Obviously. Nice. Oscar likes cats, so. Cool. Cats yeah. are cool. Yeah, but, cats are cool. So, our actual answer on the vote on Facebook. Yes, because it's closing. So, we're going to do a new one yes. in a minute, but the it old one. It was 88 generous yeah. and cool. 12% shameful. Awesome. Hmm. So, recount, I guess recount, recount, I won. Recount. Well, yeah, whatever. I won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still going to say shameful. You can't make me stop saying shameful. That's going to be my new word instead of awesome. How many times have you said the word shameful last two seconds? Shameful. <laughs> anyway, guys, so this new question, and I'm sure Tessie is just dying to do the poll on I the am, page. I am. Yes. I am. Fingers I tipped, ready to do it. Basically, <laughs> if you think that it is all Oliver's fault, then please vote. But if, however, you think that everything that could go wrong is all Kezia's fault, then vote for Kezia, you know? Can I point out I'm not actually at the desk. I'm, like, at the other side. Nowhere near any buttons. She Just is for everyone, a, though. She is a vital part of the show's makeup, so anything that does go wrong is Kezia's fault. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> However, Kezia. I will put the poll on. Okay, awesome. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've introduced oh, ourselves. Yeah. That's good. Cool. We've, we've, we've wasted a few minutes, yeah? We've introduced... We've, we've got an hour and a half. Yep. Come on. Oh, yeah. We haven't told anybody. We haven't. Well, we did. So big news kind on of. the Story Corner front, guys. <laughs> um, obviously, I, if you've tuned in last week and you've tuned in the week before... <laughs> You've noticed that we have never managed to last. Oh no! No, we lost an hour. We yeah, just we've kind never of... managed to fit everything in one hour. So no. we've always gone over and we've always kind of tweeted or Facebooked and said, "Whatever, we're just going to go over." Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I, I kind of went to the station manager and I went to the SU and I was like, "Look, no one really comes in after us. There's that wonderful show that never turns up. <laughs> it's never because ever ever turned up <laughs> because they're listening to Story Corner, obviously. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, it's obviously. Obviously, the reason they're so enthralled, enthralled, enthralled. There you go. In our in our show, that they forget that they're meant to actually be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, I get that. So, big news on the front. We actually went to um, Pulse Radio. We went or Pulse Media. We went. Can we have the subsequent hour after nine o'clock? And they said yes. So, guess what, guys? Even though we are officially going to stay your eight to nine slot, we're not going to panic if we go past nine o'clock. So we, oh. could, we could potentially be here till half nine, couldn't we? We could. We're not going to aim for half nine. We most likely are, because that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. We're so. going to aim to finish between nine and half nine. So it's one of those shows where you don't quite know, depending week by week... You just got to keep listening. ...when we're going to shut off the mics. Just keep listening. Maybe if we just keep talking till like, the wee hours in the morning, <laughs> you know. Do you reckon people will stay? No, they won't. Do you reckon our guests would stay? If you don't show them the way out, they probably would, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh yeah, where's the um, exit, by the way? I'm not telling you. I know, we, uh, um, we may have uh, locked them in, guys. <laughs> Always. <laughs> right, guys, moving on. Okay, so... I oh, just did an Oscar move, didn't I? Moving on. <laughs> yes. Damn it, what was wrong with me? It's because anyway. you've got Oscar in the brain. Oh no. Love that woman. <laughs> Catch up time, guys. So, every, every, every week we do ask what you've been up to. Anything interesting, Kezia, on your front? You I've just been... Status update me? No, I've just been editing my film. Okay. I'm getting really stressed out about editing it, but I've been doing that because that is being shown in like three weeks. Really? Yeah. It's kind of scary for, considering. But scary good? I think it's it's scary because it's a case of I've got like two minutes worth edited, but then good because it's a case of I get to see my work on a big screen and then lots of professionals get to see it and got to recognise how really bad a writer... No, how good a writer I am. There you go. <laughs> we have all these tips and we have all these prompts week after week. You have to take some on board. Yeah, you need I to believe in yourself. Yes. But I'm allowed to be like... Put myself down. That's my job. Not on radio. No, not on radio. Nah. You're a bit of a downer if you do it on radio. Yeah. <laughs> That's what... It's fine. It's fine. I believe in you. Oh, thank you. Okay. We've literally met like an hour ago. So that was Matthew, everybody. You know. Yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, guys. You've actually got I'm some big news, it. haven't you? Um, uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> I do apologise, everybody. That bang and Kezia's laugh. You've really got to stop laughing so much. Was Elliot being knocked out by the whiteboard? So. Um... Oh. <laughs> ah. Awesome. Ah. Okay. Ah. Ah. Are you okay, Elliot? <laughs> 
thumbs up from Elliot, it's fine. <laughs> Elliot, are we good? Concussion? <laughs> no. Are you going to be able to do flip the dog later? Mm-hmm. No, you don't know. Okay, awesome. He shook his head and then gave me a thumbs up. So it's a very confusing moment at this time. And I'm just currently crying. <laughs> I know you are. You know, compose yourself, woman. You're a host on a radio show. Put that on the toilet. I think it's because he leaned, he's put his head back and he's kind of moved it, hasn't he? You know? Elliot's breaking stuff, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> The radio manager's going to be listening to this. And you're just telling everyone that everything's been broken. Does that mean we can have a third option in our vote then? Whose fault is it? <laughs> Kezia's or Elliot's? Yes. Yes. Two. There I'm we go. Try, I think. Try and add that in as well. Have you already posted it? No, yeah. Okay, awesome. So Kezia... I was in the middle of doing it and then Elliot broke something. That's the universe telling you we have to add him. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get back to the show if that's okay with you, Kezia, yeah? Okay, awesome. You may not hear from Kezia for the next five minutes because she's going to be laughing in the corner. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to try and soldier on. Cool. So, guys, you've been <coughs> kind of busy with uh, FMA 12 gauge uh, album launch, is that right? Yes, we've been extremely busy with that. That was last Saturday. Um, we've been building up to it for like two years. We announced the album like two years ago, uh-huh. and then two years later, we actually completed it. It was a ridiculously yeah. long project, but we didn't expect to be that long. We thought it would take three months to start with. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought you, it would take three months. Said, One yeah. of the massive things we've learned from this project is um, that I seriously underestimate things. Yeah. Like, really underestimate. Terribly. Oh. <laughs> Would you agree, Callum? Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what we were doing last Saturday. Um, we, yeah, it, it, we just launched the album, um, an album that has taken us absolutely ages to make. Uh, we designed the whole cover. We should have brought one in today, actually, thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. there's, like, a 16-page booklet that goes with it. And all this artwork and things that we ourselves have been involved with, um, and there's like over nine thousand words of lyrics. Yeah. It's something that we've poured our hearts and our souls into, like seriously, over the last two years. Yeah, he know. tapped out all the lyrics for it and damaged mm-hmm. himself doing that. Yeah, I had my how did he damage himself? I've damaged my eyesight. Yeah. Oh, have you? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Because I've got OCD. One of the things that I've got. So when I was working on the nine thousand lyrics, I'd make one change near the end. And I'd have to go back through every single word to make sure that it was all still cool. That sounds exhausting. It is exhausting, <laughs> but it's the most fulfilling project we've ever done. Yeah, and the album definitely. launch went amazing. We, yeah, I yeah, think um, we were speaking on email and you were telling me that you were a bit exhausted from it, though. So Seriously exhausted. Yeah. I'm still uh, trying to recover now. But um, the effects, the effect that we had on the audience of people were just they were kind of astounded at what yeah. we'd done. Yeah, and I don't mean that to sound big-headed. Uh, no, no, no. Un- yeah, unless... Remember, it's a shameful plug. I know. Yeah. Wait, generous plug. <laughs> yes, yeah, a generous plug. But um, shameful. Yeah, you needed to be there. We created something. We didn't have yeah. normal music at all through the night, so I'd like planned the whole <laughs> night as if it was like the album. Mm-hmm. So it grew in intensity, and it had like highs and lows with the, each act. But then in between each act, we had another act playing who wasn't playing normal music, so we kept the feeling going, and it was just this weird feeling that like yeah. it was an experiment, but it worked perfectly and. By the okay. end of the night, it was when the lights came on. It was just like we'd all come out of like this like weird little dream or something. It was just yeah. very weird, but it was awesome. It was really good, and the feedback we, that we've had has been like absolutely incredible. And I'm guessing that wasn't planned when you were when you were doing the launch, having that kind of feel, carry on with someone else, and just building and building. Oh no, that was exactly the feel. I planned oh, okay, the album yeah. launch like yeah. I planned the album because I spent hours and hours and hours structuring um, the album. Um, yeah, I get really obsessive when I work on a project. Awesome, awesome. So, if you need a dissertation writing... I'm not good with dissertations or essays. <laughs> if it comes to something creative, then, yeah. If you need, if you need a poem writing, or... Yeah, a jingle. A jingle, or... Oh, my God. A jingle. We need yeah, a jingle, they, they, don't we? Yeah, we do. Welcome back, Kezia. Hi. Laughing gone? Yeah. Awesome. Would you like to ask them about their album launch, you know? I had a question, and then I lost it while I was laughing. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, it's Elliot's fault I lost that. Okay. <laughs> You can't do like the what silently in the corner. Like, it doesn't work. They can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's radio, so not Ma- TV. So Matthew, what what is the album's? Um, what have you called the album? Uh, so? The album is called Parental Advisory. It, like links into the fact that me and Callum are father and son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we play off that. When everyone hears the name Parental Advisory, they assume that the whole album is just full of swearing and bad yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. When that's not the case, there is songs we're swearing in. But it's a minimal into Callum. Oh, yeah. Despite Callum's best efforts to get as much swearing in as possible, I would not let him. Um, so we have a few like there's like two maybe uh, like heavy songs. songs with lots of swearing in, but all the rest there's just like tiny bits. 
Yeah. Uh, but it means more. It's more about because me and Callum have kind of built this story, and the whole album is built around this story of we've taken uh, my life and Callum's life, and we've taken it to the extreme. So within the context of the album, I'm like this weird, like little evil genius who lives out in the middle of nowhere, and um, I, I, I've got no one to work with. So I created Callum uh, to like to be yeah. the only person who could stand at my side, and then that's kind of like the basis of the album, and yeah. So it's a bit like Frankenstein is not kind, kind of like that. There's a <laughs> Pretty much, it's yeah. very heavily yeah. uh, referenced in the first. You now song. know what he thinks of you, Colin. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Half <laughs> and song, you can't get between that relationship. It's awesome. <laughs> but well, yes. it, it, it sounds it sounds um, amazingly entertaining. Um, is there a way that people can access the album? Is it gone up? At uh, all it, for it's people to... up for download on Bandcamp.com. FMA twelve gauge dot com. But we also have a selected four songs that are available to stream on most streaming sites. Oh, perfect. So if yes. people just put in what FMA, FMA plus twelve gauge, they're, they're going to come up with what? Yeah, you but you'll find like four songs of ours. Awesome. Well, we're going to come back to awesome. your album, aren't we, later on in the show? We're going to ask where you're going with it and how yep. it's going to, and what the plans are for the future. Yeah. Um, but I think it's um, time to... See, now it is shameful, what we're about to do. The shameful plug. I swear, I swear, in the previous episodes, when I said this was shameful, you kept turning around and saying, no, it wasn't, you know? Yeah, I changed my mind. Ugh, right. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> If you are an artist, a student, a local artist of any age, gender, you know, or ethnic background or any walks of life, really, if you would like to plug your work, if you'd like to be on the show, if you'd like to get some exposure, some free PR, then please do contact us here at Story Corner. And Kessie is going to give you the email because she gave me the whole, like, winky eye thing. I yes, she totally did. I don't winky eye at you But you, you wanted to do the email last week, so you might as well. Yeah, okay. So, so what you can do is you can go onto Facebook and you can search in Pulse Radio at Story Corner or... Over to my co-host. You can email us at, at storycornerradio at outlook.com. Ta-da! Ta-da. <laughs> shameful I'm, plug. It's a shameful plug. It's Thank funny. you, Callum. Thank you. No for problem. No problem. Yes. No problem. I noticed how Matthew didn't give us an applause. I know. I know. He, he, he just wasn't impressed, <laughs> was he? Man was delayed. Too yeah, late. Okay. Too late. <laughs> Aftershock. <laughs> right, guys. We're going to move into our first song, aren't we? Yep. We are. Yeah. So what we've done with this song is a bit different because um, last week... Um, Callum here. Sorry, I was just remembering your name. I do oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> he, I do that all the time as well, don't worry. <laughs> You're allowed to do that. Um, basically, Callum has narrated a sort of history of FMA 12 gauge. And we thought it'd be nice to try and like, mellow, kind of put it in or edit in with the first song. Yeah. Just so it kind of did a bit of introduction, yeah? Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. So the song is called Dirty. Yeah. yeah. Funny story, when you sent it to me, you put the word clean. I know, I noticed dirty. that. It was really funny. So I was like, <laughs> is the song called Dirty Clean? Or is it a clean <laughs> version of a dirty song? He told me Mind this. explode. He did tell me this and I was like, maybe they're just like making sure that we know that it's a clean version. No. Or no. maybe they are just no. like... It was did, you, did, you want to, did you want to confuse me? Is that no, no, I didn't realise until after I'd sent it. I was like, whoa. I didn't realise that. But no, uh, yeah, no, it's called Dirty because of the feeling that it... it we wanted to conjure up with the words. Because mm. one of the things that Callum always used to say to me when he was little, why, why he put loads of swearing in his songs, yeah. he, I was like, why are you doing that, Callum? And he, say, and he said, because um, I want my songs to be angry and like yours. And I said, if you read my lyrics, Callum, I'm not using any swearing. Huh. And that's kind of what this song is. It's like a combination of words that is kind of like a horror song without being horror without any actual aggression and stuff. Yeah, so without yeah. using the obvious illicit words that we can't, unfortunately, yes. repeat here on Pulse Radio, but <laughs> yeah, it's one of those rules, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you wanted to communicate the emotion of anger. Yeah, we wanted mm. to communicate this emotion, yeah. Yeah? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. And, um, and this song is basically the epitome of that emotion just without the obvious expression. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, it's... Yeah, do you want me to elaborate? You can. Am I, am I cool elaborating? You can elaborate well, all day long. I suffer from a lot of depression and uh, a lot of OCD and like things go like I have issues in my head, mm -hmm. and this song is is like the personification of that. It's like if that thing in my head could talk, it would write this song. Perfect. Anything to add, Cassia? No, that was I think like a perfect yeah. kind of. Yeah, I think we're destroying it by talking to one another, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should just like calm Matthew talk. Well, they could do, yeah, they could, could do. Could you do that? Yeah, we can if you want. <laughs> Welcome to Pulse Radio, everyone. New this host. Matthew Bennett and... That's what oh, you meant to say, you're <laughs> I forget my own name I think sometimes. we better stay. Yeah, maybe. What, what's, what's, what's the name of the show? 
Is it Pulse? Maybe? Story Corner. Well, Story uh, Corner. There we go. Oh, I was remembering. See, we've got to stay now. We've got to stay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Can't take the training Ruined wheels off. Quite. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but you're new host. I'm just going to have to leave. I've obviously. <laughs> I'm not right, guys. Myself. Without further ado, this is FMA plus 12 gauge with Dirty. I would like to tell you a story. It began with six men. Six insanely talented musicians. The Wrecking Crew. The Destroyers of Venues. The band more brutal than a battleship. For my anger. My dad was once sick for that sickness. I would watch him, as a little boy, standing side by side with another of my heroes, Ed the Beatdown Breverton. And I would dream. After years of performing, for my anger eventually reached its end, and my dad gave up on music. That's when I started to write. I sat in the back room, writing and learning all that I could. Even though I stuttered, I didn't give up. Even when my friends didn't believe in me, I didn't give up. I found my father in the darkness. I helped him to pick his words out of the dirt. I handed him a pen and he became FMA. In return, he gave to me experience and shared with me his knowledge. And I became 12 gauge. And that is when we began to write. We wrote word after word after word, and sentence followed sentence. Paragraphs became pages, pages became songs, and people, people began to believe in us. The songs became an album, an album that we've poured our hearts, our minds, and our souls into. This is what we were made to do. We create to survive. We create to exist. We create to destroy. I'm 20 now, and I don't stutter anymore. I've become the person that stands by my father's side on stage. And my story is only just beginning. This in the corner, I'm here for a slot. I'm a figure to fear and I'm a fit for a horse with your caution. caution. You won't think that I'm joking when you're joking on a muffle of my spit. You should have this is it. I'm a force to be reckoned with, a horse to be negative. Who worth it is intelligence. I'm ugly and elegant, my level and I'm in my element. Everything you ever did is irrelevant. All a petty sentiment, you better offer a penance. I'm a menace full of malice, got a minute full of miles of manifest. Take another look at me, I'm never any less than the best I can be. I'm a chef, so you see. The only thing I'll ever taste the beat. So what you think about that, Zach? Did I bring enough of the hardcore back? Did I spit enough of my guts in your life? Are you ready? I'll give you a second before the second. I'm the attic, bad man, a romantic, a man's full of an habit No better reason to panic, you better panic, mate He's whacking this, a burner fan, I'll have to He's got an image, script, there's no one to bring it back Remember that, quick, fast, quick enough to give you whiplash You better be betting, better be me with the last lap Could have changed, I'm not all I hold back Let the slaughter begin, 12 gauge attack My moves, I'm in a bad lax Speed rap, can lax, better build cataracts Fist marks, break bats, like a failed breakdown Set of round lines, I'm a mirage, I'm a mentor I shall win, spray can With your mouth of ammunition, I have you may as well call Rayman You're harmless, I'm to fit a mega Godzilla with a war ready since car crash in a bar press, living in the past, say quick, 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 shoot. What's this? Look at CAG. Those four words of the aristocracy is the CACC. I'm a spit of bruise, my towards. Convinced this cell sword. I a drag, dragging so much emotion, a bag of G mains, whole back packing it. Yeah, 12 back panic. I'm a lumber jabber, a bronze and a dog, maiming way amongst many things. I hijab, I hijab, I never die down. I'm bringing the recall to a bad mimic. Fat. Yeah, I'm addicted to affliction, I'm a living piece of fiction, and I'm chewing my way out. This prison tent is a ripping, I can even listen in. The whispering, and I'm the darkest heart. Full of sin. I'm a demon saving and suffering I'm a man and a monster with a wicked grin But the balance is dipping, sanity is slipping And I think I've got a need for giving Giving it to bit him and remember everything you've ever written Summary for something enough to lay your rest gibberish Charts in his bar, give you half a second to think of something to say NOW! Well I'll start pinning, picking again my friends with back with a despicable limit In hospitable lyrics, smash me iron I ain't slumped on bottom as fossil Oh damn! Maybe I'll double drop and draw drop to the floor When I freestyle, better over your beats And a pre-rate never could Proves that I'm literally a just illiterate This verse is a summary of Icarus Stop get to close to the sun You get burned by a supernova Choo choo carrying a flamethrower Try holding a candle to me You could call me the hoe 
host. I got a belly full of tippers and I'm chewing on ghosts. Hold me close. I got a map, it's like a gutter and a map full of sores. Of course, of course, I got a gaping mall. Back home, I keep her under my floor. I'm only so lonely. Why do you ignore me? Why don't you give me a little kiss, little miss? I'll only make you a little sick, but sit on list. I promise you I'm harmless and I am nothing but honest. I've always been honest, always been the honest. When you lay your head down, sleep, remember me. Remember these words to speak and don't worry. I'm a close and warm, I'm so dead. Fingertip shred, I'll be under your bed. The darkest, the hardest, the hardest. Stone Cold Buster, I'm a demon, I'm seeming. I'm dreaming, I've seen some scenes. I'm screaming because of these shits. I envision this vision of a vision. Skin is ripping, skin is giving, and a ripper is ripping. Bounce is dipping, sanity is slipping. I don't think I'm gonna need forgiving. From the heart of you, clan. This, this is Pulse Radio. Welcome back, everybody. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, this is what we had to explain to our last week guest. We, we always kind of like say hi, welcome back. And we always say hello to everyone at the end of every kind of, kind of like break or song. Yeah. Just in case you are just joining us here at Story Corner. Good idea. Yeah. Mm. It's, 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 you know, it's apparently what they do professionally. So I, mean, I thought we should follow. It is. Like, listening to other shows in my car, it's always like, hi. And I'm like, I know I've been listening to you for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to say who you are and stuff. And then it's like, yeah, but people are just getting into the cars and whatever. I'm about to disappoint you. So, guys, if you are just joining us, you are. F- <laughs> you are joining myself, Oliver, here, <laughs> and Kezia, my co-host hi. on Story Corner. Say hi, Kezia. Hi, Kezia. Awesome. And with us tonight, we have got FMA and 12 Gauge, which is a father and son rapper group. Guys, say hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that was a very... That Do that one down. again, please. Hi. Oh, okay. Hi. And we've got Elliot. Oh, Elliot. yes, Elliot. Elliot. Just sat say hi. Hi. <laughs> For the delay, it's because he's leaning forward. He doesn't have a mic of his own, okay? He could move the chair, like, forward, but, yeah. you know. I mean, I could, but... It's Elliot. Yeah. It's Elliot. He's, he's going to be really quiet on the edit, isn't he? He is. He's going to be really you need quiet. to move the chair forward. I'm so, so sorry. In a minute, guys, you're going to hear a lot more from Elliot, because Elliot is here tonight to do some readings, aren't you, Elliot? Yes, he's nodding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's also falling off his chair. You've really got to stop the laughing, love. You know, you're gonna make you're gonna set me off. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm, I'm too I'm too harsh for that. He's he's not. He will laugh at some point. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, guys, we're gonna <laughs> introduce like every week. We read out a biography for <laughs> our guests. Um, this week, I am not a little girl. No, you were last week. Last week, I was a little girl. Do you want to kind of explain that to the people that were Please here? Please do. Yes, so last week, basically, it, it's pretty much what you've done as well. Um, mm-hmm. I ask all the guests to prepare a biography that we can then read out on their behalf. But a lot of them, actually, no, you guys haven't done it. You've done it really well. Um, our last guest wrote it in a first person. So it was all with the eyes and me's and what have you. And, and so when I read female. it out... Was it Maya? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know Maya. She's one of my writing partners. Yeah, she kind of gave away that you were going to be our guest this week. Did before yeah. we actually gave away that you were going to be our guest this oh, week. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, she she F- announced you before we announced. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but she wasn't the first person. Thunder. Bill McCoy an- announced that on the first episode. Because he was talking about the Great Northern Expo. Bill always steals it. it always Bill's steals awesome. steals the show. Yeah. But he is awesome. So. He is. He is. It was, a, it was fun in Poland with him, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, I'm going to read the biography, and it's obviously going to introduce the, uh, the guest tonight. So, FMA 12 Gauge are a father and son rap duo who use their music to combat their mental health issues. They combine the aggression of mental and verbal skills of hip-hop. Sorry, they combine the aggression of metal and verbal skills of hip-hop with the energy of youth and the experience of age. Since joining forces in 2013, their anger fueled songs and live shows have struck a chord with audiences and they have surprised many with their slick raps and energetic performances. Made up of Matthew Bennett, FMA, and Callum Gage Bennett, 12 Gage, the pair both use their creative abilities as a form of therapy and release. Matthew was diagnosed with autism at the age of 35. They were invited to perform at the Anna Kennedy Online Charity Show event Autism Got Talent in 2017, where they received a standing ovation. Rather than writing about money, women, sex or drugs, their lyrics deal with more mental health issues and darkness that they both face on a day-to-day basis. They have been described as an act unlike any other. 
Tom O'Boyle of Metal Hammer, quote, The father and son on holy flows spit with a unique, roughly hewn, Prestonian intensity. And Anna Kennedy OBE, so talented, an absolutely breathtaking performance. And there we go. Wow. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Shameful, generous. Yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, yes, reading the biography, um, untraditionally or alternative, not a lot of rap people out there, or not a lot of people who may not know a lot about rap, they just automatically associate illicit language, profane swearing with the genre of rap, but it isn't the case, of course. No. You know? mm-hmm. It is just basically another stereotype that has befallen yeah. that industry or that type yeah. of music. To be fair, that's what I kind of thought, but that's because I grew up with like that always being there and that's what yeah rappers did yeah and like Based, i was but, saying earlier that the only one i actually understood and could actually and actually liked was um vanilla rice with ice ice baby nice. was, that's like mm-hmm. the only rap i've ever heard apart from like the little bit within wannabe and that's it <laughs> exactly but, yeah. <laughs> it's only it's only because you've got a really narrow view of it and that's not your mm. fault it's just what it's is head fed to you yeah it's, the media. Yeah. it's what makes actually. money exactly. exactly but obviously in your bio you go on to say that you don't write necessarily about money women sex or drugs but it is more about the mental is- issues that you suffer and the darkness that you face on a day-to-day basis would you like to talk about that um, yeah i've always uh, used ever since i started writing and i started writing like when i was like eight nine uh, i've always had an amazing imagination but i've always used it as a, a way of getting out the things that just build up in my head and whether i knew about knew that i was doing it consciously or not it's what i, I have done for years and years and years and it's kept me well um, so yeah, it's just an extension of that. I'd given up completely on music um, when Callum came to live with me, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. and it, it was Callum who drew me back in to music. Like from that piece that he played just before Dirt Eye, that was connected to it. Uh, that's the story that Callum's talking about. There, he's talking about. Would you like to say it, Callum? Uh, yeah. Um, well, when I started writing, it was around the same age as when my dad started, but my dad had just stopped writing music at that point. He'd um, been in a band and stuff and it had broken up and it had pretty much taken your love for music away I don't know when that brand like band broke up so when I moved in um I just wanted to rap it was kind of this thing where in high school um because I'm dyslexic I didn't know I was dyslexic until I was in college but I wasn't really good at any one particular subject I wasn't that took me like everyone else could do these things really simply and I'd have to concentrate for ages and ages and ages just to get one thing down and kind of one of my mates turned around to me one day and went oh yeah there's this poster up in the like cafeteria about learning to rap do you want to go and learn how to rap and me being a cocky teenager at the time just went I already know how to rap mate (laughs) I didn't at all but (laughs) but that kind of was like the inciting moment for it where I kind of went home and I went I'm actually going to try that. And it developed from like sitting in the backs of buses with my hoodie on thinking I'm Eminem yeah, to yeah. then actually like writing my own things and performing my own things. And um, when I moved in with dad, it just became a constant stream after that point. Uh, dad, I've written something new. Dad, I've found this. Rap to this. Dad, do this. Dad, do that. Yeah, and that's how cool it'd be if we did this. And he kept, he kept bringing things to me like time after time after time. And I could see there was something bad, there was something good. And then his mum just one day just said, there's a gig coming up, why do you not do a few songs to help Callum's confidence? Because he used to have a really bad stutter, did Callum? Uh, And so I said, yeah, it'll be fun. And we created these like four or five songs and we performed them and it went a million times better than we could have thought uh, expected because the father-son thing, people connect to it in a way that they don't connect to other acts. Because there's something instantly relatable there. Yeah, yeah. you found yeah. you found the the common kind of share thing that common you could ground. common ground that you could find between both of them. It's actually quite amazing because we did want to talk about you know how your combination as a writer and a rapper have kind of played off one another. Yeah. But what I want to talk about first, I, I'll, I'll, we'll go back to it. Don't worry. But um, mm-hmm. what I wanted to talk about first is that obviously you, you said that you um, got into rapping yeah. when you were in high school, yeah, yeah. Callum, and it was kind of motivated by one of your friends giving you a poster yeah yeah um at that point did you did you know that your your dad was into the music was into the words and mm. the rapping as well or, or is it something that you then found out when you brought that to him it was you had, always, and, you, and then you kind of mm. formed that connection yeah it was always kind of i knew that he was musically talented i'd never sort of doubted that he was kind of a reason i wanted to be a musician 
um, seeing him perform on stage was that reason. I didn't, however, know he could rap until I heard a song when I was like 14. And he'd recorded this song, I think, as just like an odd one-off song. And I listened to it, and I listened to it all the time, and I played it to all my friends, and I was there like, guess who that is? And they'd be there like, who? It's my dad. <laughs> and then they'd be there like, oh, it's it really cool, it's really cool, that. And I'd just carry on listening to it and stuff. And then kind of from that point, I was there like, oh, imagine if me and my dad wrote a song together. And then it just was just a song. I never wanted to do anything more than a song at that yeah. point. And then it turned into the gig, and then the gig turned into a CD, and then the CD turned to two CDs, turned to an album, turned to this. And at, at what point did it did it become um, FMA and 12K? I know you just gave mm. us a history narration. I should have paid more <laughs> attention to my history lesson. But um, yeah, but when did it, from your own um, words, when did it become FMA and 12K? Well, what FMA stands for is For My Anger, which is the name of my old band. Mm. Right, okay. And when we did this first gig, we were like, what can we call ourselves? Because Callum's mm. middle name is Gage, G A G E. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is why he calls himself 12 gauge yeah. um, but we were like what can we call us Callum and it was like for my anger FMA and it's like so he was performing with my old band yeah. and 12 gauge that's what it means okay that's cool so it's, nice. it, it, we've kept the same yeah. philosophy as our old band yeah. um, but it, we've changed it slightly haven't we yeah yeah well, that sounds really good. That's it sounds cool. like you're bringing, you know, that experience that you've had as a musical performer yeah. and, and passing it on, if you will. Yeah, it's all about old and new. Everything we've created with this project is about mm. the old meeting the new. Okay, and, cool. um Because you, you get everybody, like, they, they cause divisions, don't they, and be like, oh, no, like, new music's rubbish or old music's rubbish and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And it's just so silly because it's a sound. And it's like, how can you differentiate between one sound and say one sound's better than another sound? It's not. It's personal taste. But uh, we are doing something different by saying let's stop that and just bring in everything that we love and put it all together yeah so what you're trying to combat is you're trying to combat maybe the cultural yeah one of like, yeah what, like stereotype what, of saying oh my dad listens to oh that's really old music oh that's boring well yeah, when, yeah. within my old band it was like a metal band mm-hmm. but we had like chavs come into the gigs and we had emo kids come into the gigs but the metal guys wouldn't like the emos and the emos wouldn't like the chavs and the chavs wouldn't like these other people it, but it was so awesome but we were all in the same place together Mm. And it's like, we, yeah, we're trying to like just knock that down and just like enjoy the music for what it is. It doesn't matter. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, Which like, is... it's like when you get told that, oh, you shouldn't be listening to whatever yeah. um, because you're only like 20 something. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. I grew up with this music. This is what yeah. was in my house being played. Like, Yeah. If you like it, you like it. It's silly being told to not like something. Well, yeah, my exactly. mum likes Neil Diamond. Cool. My dad does. My dad loves him. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Not oh no, Neil you Young. Don't. My dad loves Neil Young. My dad might be annoyed at me. <laughs> 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 I guess you don't, Oliver. <laughs> oh, did I just? Okay, yeah. No, uh, yeah. I, I'm. I'm. I've got to be honest. I have listened. Obviously, I listened to a few. No, I. I like the. I like the. Um, uh, what is it? The more popular Neil Diamond songs. Yeah. You know, to be perfectly honest, his his whole complete album work. You know, my mum will play it in the car all the time. Me. I'm it's like, on car journey for you there. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, just Spotify. Okay, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those preferences, I guess. Um, what is the what is the relevance about the number twelve then? Before your before the word gauge, if you, if you well, um, pretty much a twelve gauge is a shotgun. Right, at okay. the same time, it's a type of shotgun, um, and kind of over the years, as everything has kind of built up, I've just come up with more reasons for the name. It was like the name was another one of my mates. And I used to be called Barricade, like, when I just started and I was showing him stuff. And that was because it was my favourite Transformer from the first Michael Bay uh, Transformer movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, The police car right at the beginning. And then I was walking along with my mate and I was saying, oh, I don't know, I've got, like, I've got this rap name, but I don't really like it that much. And then he said, oh, yeah, what's your middle name? And I said, Gage. And then he went, 12 Gage, like a shotgun. And I was there, like... Mm. Okay, <laughs> it's that cool simple. Reason. But whoever this mate is, I think you're paying need to pay them relatives, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the whole thing is, is that it's two different mates, but they're never going to know that <laughs> but, um... unless they listen to Pulse Radio at Story Corner. Yes, yeah, yeah where where Callum Bennett has just admitted to it on live on radio. <laughs> Thank you, Callum. Can't take it back. <laughs> <Don't worry>. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, so um, exactly. Um, What I wanted to ask next, as well as um, obviously, as well as being a rapper with your son for FMA and 12 Gauge, you're also um, a writer. Yes. Yeah, Uh, you studied here at UCLan. Yep, I studied screenwriting and creative writing. Cool, cool. Um, And just out of curiosity, 
why that diverge into that from what you were doing with FMA? Well, I wouldn't see them as being different. It's kind of like the lines people see between songs. It's all words. Right, and I'm okay. just using them in different ways. It's exactly... I see it in... To me, it's exactly the same. I'm just using them in different formats. A song, a really well-written song, will follow the same structure as a really well-written story. It will take you on ups and downs, and by the end of it, you'll, it will be a conclusion of the entire song. And it's the same with a script and a song. I just... I, I think it's the way my brain is programmed. I see the structure of things and that allows yeah. me to put these yeah. words into these different styles of writing well it's very talented I, I, I couldn't Thank do you. it yeah. yeah well we we struggled coming up with anything to it's do cool. with a jiggle it's we cool. thought you were right. we, we were writing jingles like... and we were like maybe a Shakespearean um, quote I, I struggle <laughs> with um, <laughs> I struggle with social interactions though, so I've, that's where I lack yeah. so it, every person has been given these skills or not been given these skills and my skills are in words whereas I lack the social interaction skills yeah. So I was talking about with a friend, because he was more about numbers at school, mm. and I was more about like words and stuff. Because I've yeah. I've got dyslexia too, yeah. so yeah. it's like. But I had to come up with ways to get around that because I was yeah. only diagnosed after I did my GCSE. Yeah. yeah, same. And like, I was actually looking to get a B, so I was quite happy with that. Cool. But he was like, "Yeah, but you're always like really good at words." I'm like, "Yeah," because I told stories and got them out of my head because yeah. <laughs> they yeah. were just floating around. Yeah. So it's like it's exactly the same. It's like getting them out in a creative way. Yeah, it mm. helps. It so, helps yeah. your mental health a lot. Yeah. Creativity does. I don't know why. It's just really weird. Yeah. You, it's like you're expressing things that you can't express. Definitely, normally. definitely. Mm. I I tend to be able to write things better than say them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's what that's what all my writing is. When you if you sat me down and you said, So Matthew, how are you feeling today? Yeah. I'd just go on a ramble for hours and hours and hours. But give then, you a pen. If, yeah. But if you give me a pen, then give me a night. I can come up with this amazing piece of poetry, which or story, which will tell you exactly how I feel. Yeah. Um, so by obviously with what you're saying is that the only difference between your writing and your musical performance is the format. Yeah. Essentially, the the same methodologies, the same practices yeah. is, is kind of applied to the approach. Yeah. Whether you're writing it for a, on a piece of paper that will be bound and then published in some journal yeah. or bookstore or what have you, or if it's going to be, you know, written and you're going to then Performed. remember it and perform it yeah. on on a stage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's such a good way to look at it, though. It's all. It's all about. Such good way. Yeah, it's I all have about... that skill of of observing things. You know, <laughs> yes, you are. You, you came up with the whole sponge thing. It's all about. What I said last week. It's all about opposites. <laughs> it's, it's about like loud and quiet. It's about fast and slow. It's about uh, nothing and something. It's all about these opposites connecting and using them in clever ways. And but and every single story, every piece of art is that. When you get it right down to like the binary level. Cool. It's like zeros cool. and ones. Well, I think it's I think it's time we um we have a bit of an example of this yes. uh, binary art that you talk of, Matthew, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, sounds so pretentious, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time for Elliot to show us. What yeah. He can do. So the first thing that we're actually going to um we're going to read out is called Writer's Block, and it was written by um, FMA's Matthew Bennett. Yep. Um, just so it can. To clear out that this is this this material has been written by you. Yes, it's yes. mine. Yes, it's yours. Yes, um, Callum is is more of the rapping side, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. No, but he's also he is my writing partner, even when it's not rapping. That he doesn't take the front seat when it comes to other stuff. So, like, okay. if I'm working on a story or a script, yeah. I go to Callum first and I test his reaction, and his reaction is what I base everything else on. Oh. He did and actually it, say earlier he was his guinea pig. Yeah. Oh, he did, yes. Every, did. every oh, writer absolutely. needs a guinea pig. Yes. Every writer. Stephen <laughs> King's is his wife. Uh, Chuck Palahniuk was his writer's group before he got chucked out, I think. Um, I don't That's know. <laughs> Callum, you're a guinea pig. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, would you like to introduce Writer's Block then for us, Matthew? Tell us a bit about it before we head over to the reading. E- I don't know to what to say because I don't want to spoil it. anything. Yeah, can we read it and read then I'll talk, talk about it? Yeah. Okay, right. Without further ado then, I'm going to hand it over to Elliot Miller. Hi, hello, Elliot. Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, you're going to give us this... How's uh, your head, Elliot? Uh, Just quickly. Uh, yeah, good. Good, good. Good, good. no lossy. Good, good. Uh, <laughs> know about that, yeah, we'll find out about that one. <laughs> right, guys. Okay, this is Writer's Block by Matthew Bennett. My name is Andrew Wiltz, and my dad used to say, it's called the past because it's past. Always look forward and never look back. Live in the now. He always insisted on that, 
He believed that it was a lesson that everyone should learn. He never understood that sometimes the past doesn't pass. Sometimes it holds on for dear life and it doesn't let go. Sometimes it's all there. It's all there is. I used to be one sixth of one happy family, one sixth of one whole, two parents, two sisters, and one little brother. Kelly, Mary, Stephen, and me, the genius. I was the only one of us that had a talent. I had a gift with a pen. Ever since I could read, I wanted to write. And ever since I could write, I wanted people to read what I had written. Stephen used to watch me work. He'd watch me for hours and then read it through when I was done. He'd look at me with awe in his eyes, like I was a god. How do you do it? He'd ask me, and I'd reply with the truth. I don't know. I just do. The years passed and I continued to write. I never got anything published, not even a rejection letter, but it never put me off. When I left home and got a job, I kept on writing. All this was just a run up. I knew it. I was building up speed. Then boom, I'd be respected. I'd be successful. I'd be happy. It was a beautiful morning in June when an aneurysm killed my dreams. I was talking to my mum when it happened. I didn't see any change or even a flicker. One second she was there and the next she was gone. She'd left her body long before I heard the crack of her head bouncing off the flagstones. The funeral was a dream. A dream dressed in all black. A dream that was more real than anything I'd ever experienced before. Our faces were like those of the dead. Everything was muted and everything was wrong. Reality had suddenly shifted to the side and it hurt. We were waiting for Dad when Stephen's phone started to ring. He answered it and I remembered his eyes were sparkling. He mumbled something and then a big grin spread like a gaping wound across his face. The words fell out of his mouth. I've just told my sir's story. All I did was stare. Steve didn't write. Steve didn't do anything. He took control at the funeral. He greeted people with a smile and a hug. He told stories of how Mum used to dance and sing. He made everyone laugh with the awful jokes she used to tell. He even gave a eulogy, bowing his head as he spoke, the picture of a perfect son. Then we said goodbye to her, and it was over. Like cowards, we swept away beneath the carpet of dirt, out of sight and out of mind. And then, like nothing had ever happened, life began to move on again. I tried to find comfort by disappearing into my words. Steve's success helped fuel me for a while, but the nights that I couldn't write quickly became more common than the nights that I could. I was empty. All the words had gone from my head, and any hopes I had of finding inspiration were crushed. When a few months after Mum left us, Dad stopped breathing. Once again, Steve rose to the occasion. He told everyone at the funeral that it was a broken heart that killed our dad. He kept everyone entertained, and he made people forget, if only for a moment, what had happened. Afterwards, he pulled me to one side and told me that he'd just sold his first book. I could only stare. He sent me a signed copy when it came out, and I noticed that he dropped the V from his name in favour of a PH. He'd always thought it was more sophisticated that way. He always used to get pretentious and sophisticated mixed up. What I managed to read of it was good. That's why the rest of it went into the bin. He left the day after the funeral with a smile and a wave. He was leaving, begin to, he was leaving to begin his new life, and I couldn't help but feel that it was my life he was leaving with. This time, the past didn't pass. It just sat like a demon inside my head, reminding me over and over again of everything that I had lost. More than anything, I needed to write. I had to write, but I couldn't. I needed to forget, but I couldn't. I watched as Steve's book became a bestseller, and all I could do was seesaw between denial and grief, the two unhappy halves of the whole that was me. Steve's call came out of the blue. Hi, Andy. You missed me. I'm working, but not getting anywhere. I thought I'd catch up with the family and see if it triggers anything. You know what I mean? Of course you do. Are you still writing? I ignored him. Have you got Kelly's number? I recited the numbers and listened to the scratch of his pen upon paper. My pen. My paper. Thanks, Andy. You're a lifesaver. He hung up, and I listened to the line die. I almost lost my line when we got the call that Kelly was in hospital and in critical condition. We didn't have long to say goodbye. I didn't ever want to say goodbye to anyone ever again. It's easier to say goodbye when you're saying goodbye in pain, when you're saying goodbye to pain. Steve has said that. Steve and his endless wisdom. He called that night asking how Kelly was. I didn't talk to him. I couldn't. I was a mess. Mary took the phone from me and began demanding why he wasn't here. We needed him. Kelly needed him. I heard the calm tone in which he replied. He wasn't coming. He was in the middle of making a deal, one that would change his life. Mary started to scream at him, then screamed so much that she tore her vocal cords. 
and when she couldn't scream any more, she hung up on him. In the silence that followed, I heard the demon whisper, Stephen blooms while Andrew wilts. When it was over, all we could do was go home. I tried to go on, but I could constantly feel dread hanging over me, knotting my belly and knotting my mind. I was on edge constantly. My nerves were about to snap. I spent hours pacing back and forth. I developed nervous twitches, stutters and shakes. I knew I was falling apart, but I couldn't stop it. I lost my job and I sold everything, every memory and every dream just to be able to afford to live, to exist. Then one day, Mary stopped answering her phone. She stopped answering her door too. She's listed as missing on the police database, but I don't think she's missing. I've been doing a lot of thinking. I didn't tell anyone where I was going. I just left everything behind and ran. I ran as far as I could, but no matter how far I went, I always saw Steve looking out at me from the covers of newspapers and out through TV screens. He's just sold the film rights to his first book, and the world loves him. He doesn't use the name Wilts anymore. He'd always wanted a name that was fit for a king. I ran and I ran, and now here I am. The past has run away like water beneath the bridge, and I'm sat here in this dirty room, listening to the fat flies dancing through the air. I've fallen a long, long way, but I think I've almost reached the bottom. There's more that I could say, about how I see Steve in my, all my dreams, his mouth wide, ready to eat me up. I could write about Kelly's funeral, but I can't bring myself to do it. There are some wounds that are too big to bear alone, and right now I'm the loneliest that I've ever been. I remember thinking, once, that I'd do anything to get the words back. I didn't mean it. Nothing is worth this. Steve knows where I am. I know he does. I know because the letter came this morning, the only letter since I've been here. It was addressed to me. It was from His Highness, Steve. He asked me how I was. He asked me if I was happy. He asked me if I could help him find a little inspiration. Thank you very much, Elliot. Thank you. <laughs> Story Corner's very own Elliot Miller there, reading Writer's Block, written by our own FMA, Matthew Bennett. Well, I think that was amazing. I think um, what we, we touched on a lot there, we touched on identity, we touched yep. on memory, we touched on jealousy, denial, grief. There's a lot of emotions flying around emotions. in that piece. I know, I wrote, it, um, I wrote it, it, it was basically about writer's block, but it was also, yeah. When, when I create things, the, the, I don't realise until after I've created them what the thing is actually about, but when I look back on these things, I know exactly what they're about, and they're about very specific moments in my life. Right, okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I did with that. I poured my hurt into that story. Right, okay, cool. And um, obviously you, you say, obviously, you look back um, in reflection of what you've written. Um, what was your reflection when you had penned that then? Was it something that you um, felt that you needed to express and you needed to get out onto some form of physical... No, it was... No, I, I didn't even think of that. It was just I found out that the LEP prints stories every weekend and you've got 1,500 words and that's what <laughs> happened. Okay. And cool. It's only Good afterwards enough, when... It's only afterwards when I look at it that I realise what I was doing at the time and it does... With every single thing that I've created, that is what it is. But there's also... I've ruined the secret in there. There's like a massive secret because I'm a really big fan of uh, video games and Easter eggs in video games. Uh -huh. And I've always been like, how do you fit that into like writing or other forms yeah. of entertainment? Yeah. So the bad guy in that is Stephen King. It's like, that's how he got all his power. He sacrificed his family to wow. get his writing. But Literally there's... about a second before, the second before you said that, I realised. See, Elliot's quick off the mark. I didn't... Cool. It's... <laughs> thank you, thank you, Elliot. But yeah, I, I sent, I did send it to because Stephen King. King. It makes perfect, it makes perfect sense. Thank you, thank you very much, Elliot. But I did send That's it to so Stephen stupid. King, but he didn't read it. But his manager sent me a letter saying he can't read it. So oh. I've, got, I've, got, I've got a letter from <laughs> Stephen King's manager on my wall. Bravo. <laughs> he can't read it or he won't read he, it? He gets so much fan mail. You don't realise, do you, until no, like, yeah, you I'm actually sorry. get pointed well, he, out. He may have actually read it and just gone, yeah, I'm not going to actually reply. Cause, well, I'd like to think that if Stephen King did read that, he'd appreciate being the bad guy. Yeah. I think he'd like that. Do we have Definitely. any basis for that? Yeah, because I've read loads of books that he's done on writing and stuff. He's one of my massive influences. Stephen King and okay. Clive Barker, I love their short stories, and that's why I write short stories. Um, but yeah... You can tell he'd love that. He would absolutely <laughs> love that. Um, One thing that I think I took out of anything is that whether it was about the narrative or the narrator or the person that he was talking of himself in the first person or when he was talking about Stephen or he was talking about the other characters that appear in the story, it all seemed to, to kind of 
boiled down, as you were saying before, binary into identity. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and I can't help but think that the identity of a character, an identity of an author, uh, an identity of a rapper is kind of, you know, focused to one's art or one's method. And I was just wondering if you had, you know, like if there was a connection between, let's say, um, your FMA identity as a rapper and your identity as, um, or creating your identity in the in the form of these characters. Do you think do you think identity plays a lot into it, or or no no comment? You can say no comment. I'm not sure if I understand the question. <laughs> basically, what <laughs> I, do do you understand the question? Have I made sense? No. Okay. Because even I got confused. I'm basically saying it's it's basically how important is self identity in one's work? That's the question. You oh. know, especially when it comes from two different mediums. I've, there's also another thing that we haven't touched on yet. Uh, that gives me a massive advantage over other people. Um, due to my autism and uh, my mental health issues, I'm also extremely obsessive, which has led to addictions in the past. So by the age of 21, I was in rehab due to alcohol abuse. And in rehab, I was pumped full of information that you don't normally learn until you're a really old person. So I spent a year and a half within rehab being taught every day to look at every thought that I have, every thought that every other person has, because you need to know exactly where these thoughts are coming from to stop the addiction. You need to stop it right at the very root not once it's like spread out and grown big. Oh. Um, so I was taught that within rehab, so that's given me a massive advantage when it comes to writing because I'm able to look upon myself and other people and look at the real reasons why people do things rather than look at the actions that they do. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so I, I've kind of cheated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you've answered my question. <laughs> I probably haven't. <laughs> But no, yeah, that's not. I kind of forgot identity. on the question now. Because it's anyways. about identity. It's fine. It's, it's, fine. it's, it's fine. about identity. So I am more than aware of exactly who I am. I'm, I know all my faults. I know everything about myself. So I'm able to put all that stuff down on paper, and I'm comfortable doing it. There we go. He's answered go. the question. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Right, guys, uh, we're going to move on to our second song. Um, I think we are kind of like really behind. What? Yeah, we are. Really it's meant to have like the next, like the third song by now. Thanks for. Putting the pressure on. I got us an extra hour and you could put the pressure on, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Right, guys. Uh, we're going to play the next song, which is FMA plus 12 gauge Home Time. Um, Matthew or Callum, because we haven't heard mm. much from Callum. Callum, do you want to no. take the lead on this one? Go do on. you want to give us a bit of an introduction to Home Time? Tell us where it came from. What was the inspiration behind it? Well, one of the secrets that I think I should tell everyone right now about FMA is FMA is a massive fan of Nightcore. Yeah, I'm a teenage girl inside. Really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, same snap. <laughs> looking at his, looking at his YouTube. Well, Britney, I've already admitted to liking Britney, so you know. <laughs> but yeah, like listening. So I forget what it was. One day he was playing his nightcore teenage girl playlist, and I was I was walking through the front room, or he walked up to me and said, "Oh, I found this beat, and it's really cool." And I listened to this beat, and it had violins, and it was compared to everything else we'd done, it was so happy and so positive and just the sound of it was so you know like 90s rave yeah just yeah. E e like ecstatic people jumping around kind of feeling so filled with energy and yeah so i came up with a really stupid intro to the song and then because of that intro we decided to write this song which has led on to a lot of people turning around to me and saying it's their favorite yeah of our songs and it's, the, the album. Yeah. I'm sorry to have to talk over you, Callum. But, it's okay, um, the it's album. Okay. The album starts off Respect in. Respect your elders, Callum. In a, <laughs> the album starts off in a really angry place, and yeah. this is the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Um, so this is a happy one, and it's about me being proud of how far Callum's come. Yeah. Callum didn't realise that until like a year afterwards when I was talking about it with someone else. Was that so another beautiful. Easter egg? Yeah, that was. Oh, I like filling my work full of Easter eggs. <laughs> I like. I, I think it's interesting to look for secret things and extra yeah. things within work. There's no, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We all no. like that. We all like a bit of mystery. Yes. So, guys, we're going to go to um, the second song, but stay with us here at Story Corner. I know it's been a long episode because right after the song, we're going to go straight to another Elliot Miller's voice acting wonderful extravaganza with Heaven Sent. Um, and yeah, yeah, join us for that. But in the meantime, this is FMA plus 12 gauge home time. Equation for that is battles plus no 
From the heart of you, clan. This, this is Pulse Radio. Welcome back, everybody. You are all here with myself, Oliver, and my lovely co-host, Kezia, hi. here at Story Corner. Say hi, Kezia. Hi, Kezia. If you are just joining us, you have missed a whole <laughs> hour. Where have you been? Where have you been, Kezia? I just sat right here. Oh, really? Okay. Anyway, I know yeah. we're invisible, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> But, and, you know, if you are just joining us, we are joined by FMA and 12 Gauge, Matthew and Callum Bennett. Say hi, guys. Hi, hi. guys. <laughs> Taking the lead yeah, from me. Go. Come there on. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And hi, guys. Say hi, guys, Callum. Hi, guys. There you go. <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> really, really suspicious about you, then. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the jingle if he's got a voice like that. You know? <laughs> and there's Elliot. Don't forget Elliot. <sighs> How could I forget I know he's, he's kind of invisible over there in the corner, but, you know. Hey, hey how's it going? Hi, so Elliot. Good. Say hi, hi, Elliot. Hi, Elliot. Yep, there you go. Yeah. See, this this is... Is... <laughs> Oh my God. See, the reason I say hi Kezia is last week he said say hi Kezia and I just kind of did it and then from that point well he's telling you to say hi Kezia it makes exactly. sense exactly exactly and he looked at me with that that look going really mm-hmm. how can you say no <laughs> anyway if you are joining us you are joining us for the hour sort of kind of not a bit more than of story <laughs> oh, excellent time <laughs> wow. no. that wasn't that was catchy that at all. it was I like that but did you understand it well, I only understand it because I know what you mean. Yeah, okay. However, you so, might want to kind of reiterate what you meant. Yeah, so what I meant is that uh, we always go over our time we slot. We, we, ne- we never fit it. And obviously, if you are just, if you've been here from the beginning, we're actually over it by five minutes. So we went, we went to the SU and we was like, uh, all the radio managers and the radio gods, and we were like, please, please. Can we have some more time, please? Here's an offering of Please, sir, nothing. can we have some more time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you couldn't do that. Stop that. <laughs> That's not going to catch on. What she just said is, is horrible. He says, <laughs> holding his hand like a ball. Yeah. So, yes, if you are joining us, this is the sort of not one hour, but kind of not one hour. Or kind of one hour. It's our two hour show. Go, just, just go with that. <laughs> it's our two hour show. That's a better slow. title. Exactly. Right, guys, we're going to move straight into <laughs> the next written work. And if you did join us before the song, uh, we just had the wonderful Elliot read out Matthew's writer's block, which was which was really good. We had a bit of discussion about identity, didn't we? Yep. 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 Um, would you like to introduce this one, or do you not want to give this one away? Do you want to? Sim, again, I'll talk about. Do you just want to say the name cool. and then? It's called Heaven Sent. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know. <laughs> no, no, that was perfect. I wasn't going to say anything. It's just the look I gave you. <laughs> it was the look. He does that all the time. He makes me feel so small. I oh. know. It's because I am six foot four, so I can't help it. It's biology. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> That doesn't mean you make me feel small inside. Oh, I don't care. But anyway, we're going to move so on. so nice, really. Well, we're already over to a con. Okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm going to move it over to Elliot. Elliot, you're going to read Heaven Sent, aren't you? Yeah? I certainly am, yes. Let's do it. In the middle of nowhere, on a hill that overlooks the world. The cottage was small, big enough for two, but too big for one. This is where Louis lives. He lives here alone. His days are spent tending the garden that grows out back. The garden that his wife, Zoe, had planted and grown. The garden that she had loved so much. He used to spend his days watching her. Now he spends them remembering. Zoe crouched, stroking the flowers, whispering to them, encouraging them to grow big, to grow strong. Zoe, so proud of the little colony that she had helped to thrive. He would stand over her and place his hand in the crook of her neck. She would always let out a moan of pleasure. Always. How much do you love me? she would ask. How long is a piece of string? he would answer. The same answer he had always given, and she would smile and snuggle into him that bit more. I don't know what I'd do without you, Louis. I promise, that's something you never, ha- you never need worry about. He never broke that promise. We'll be together forever. He woke up one day to find her, silent and unmoving beside him. He had held her tight, rubbing her hands between his, trying to warm them. He had pleaded and begged and screamed, but despite all his efforts, time had continued to pass, each second taking him further away from their last night together. He had spent every day, every day ever since, caring for the garden, not knowing what it was he was doing, just copying the things he had seen Zoe do. Little by little, he was killing it. Then one day he found the string. He was asleep, no longer residing within his body. Louis... He rose up through layers of sleep, expecting her to be pressing into his side, her warm breath on his neck. He opened his eyes, but once again saw only an empty space and cold sheets beside him. He ate his breakfast in silence that morning. His thoughts were with his memories. Everywhere he looked reminded him of her, every cup and every piece of furniture, every picture that hung from the walls. He had a memory for each, and for each memory he had a hundred more, but without her he had nothing. It was later than normal when he finally stepped out into the garden to repeat his daily routine of ignorance. That's when he saw the string, white and fine. It lay draped over the entire garden, over the nameless bushes, and wrapped around the colorful flowers. It ran the length of the lawn and lay draped over the stone walls that surrounded the garden. He never once questioned where it had come from. He began to clear it up. The string was like fine twine, sticking to his fingers like a web when he touched it. The work was slow, and it was almost evening by the time he got round to clearing the last bush. As far as he could tell, there was just one long piece of string, wrapped round everything that grew within the four stone garden walls. He had tried snapping it and cutting it, but he couldn't do it. It was impossible. He had filled an old sack full of it, and now it was too heavy for him to lift. He lowered his head and got to work. It seemed as if the string was unwrapping itself, and within minutes he was always, almost done. He pulled the last length from the bush and stared in amazement. The string had all been packed away, yes, but he hadn't reached its end. It led up from the sack to his hand, then up into the sky, into the sunset, like he was holding the world's biggest and brightest balloon. He squinted, trying to make out what it was attached to, but he couldn't tell. He pulled. There was the slightest resistance, but the string reeled in. He pulled again and again, then spent the next few minutes pulling in great arm lengths of it. After a few more minutes, he stopped, confused. There seemed to be no end to it. Granted, he could only see the string for a few meters in front of him, but surely he should be able to see what it was attached to from here. The sun had become an orange crescent on the horizon. He wouldn't be able to stay outside for much longer. The cold hurt him too much these days. He took a couple of rocks from the stone wall, placed one on each corner of the bag, and wrapped the string around another. Then he retired to the house to the night, to think. He sat in the dark for a long time, listening to the creaks of the pipes and listening to the absence of Zoe. She still spoke to him sometimes, mostly when he was led in bed, teetering upon the edge of sleep. That's when he would feel her whispering to him, the same way she had when they had been led together, the closest they could ever be, each basking in the heat of the other. She would nuzzle his neck and whisper, 
her words punctuated by her heavy breathing. He missed that sound most of all. It was midnight when Louis finally got into bed, tired from all the thoughts and all the questions, tired from remembering. That night, she came to him. Louis? Zoe? Don't open your eyes. Was it the memory of her voice? No, she was here. He knew it. Do you still think about me, Louis? Every day, every minute and every second. He felt her lips against his neck. Her breath made his nerves jingle. Am I dreaming? Silence. Are you still mine? Forever. He lay there, relishing the feel of her against him. He could feel sleep creeping through his limbs. Before long it would be behind his eyes, pulling him down. Down. How much do you love me? He fell. It was the best night's sleep he'd had in months. He got out of bed, full of energy and purpose, and flung open his bedroom curtains. There it still was, the bag and the string, solid and real. He skipped breakfast and got dressed, not even stopping for his customary coffee before heading outside. With the sun behind him, he could see what he was dealing with a lot better. The string led off up into the air in front of him, gently rising up into the sky, getting darker and thinner the further it went. As far as he could see, there was still no end to it. He touched the string. It still had the same sticky texture and the same resistance to it. He laughed, loud and long. He could almost hear her whisper. How long is a piece of string, Louis? Show me. He began to reel the string in once again, wrapping it around his forearm and shoulder, the same way he had seen cowboys do it, the same way he had done since he was a little boy. Over and over and over again, and over again, dropping it into the bag when there was too much for him to hold. The sun climbed, warming the earth and his aching joints. Noon came and went. The string had almost filled another sack, and he still had no view or clue as to where it might have come from. He considered stopping for something to eat, but he could feel her just behind his shoulder. Show me, Louis. Show me. He didn't stop. He couldn't. The day had passed, and still the string had no end. It was infinite. The sack had filled long ago, and he had started to just drop it on the grass by his feet. He worked until sunset, until the light had begun to fade, then he retired into the cottage for the night. He sat in the same chair he had always sat in, and thought the same thoughts that he always thought, or at least he tried. His eyes were drawn to the window and out into the night sky where the string was waiting. He couldn't bear it any longer. He stood and looked out the window, searching for the string in the darkness, but it was invisible to him. Invisible or gone? He rushed outside. That was the bag, and that was the pile. He hurried over and fumbled around until he found it. It was still there, still leading up to the sky. He couldn't bring himself to let it go, couldn't bring himself to risk losing it. How long? The night was cold and he had left his coat inside, but that didn't matter. He worked in the dark. His movements were clumsy at first, but after a while he had worked out a routine and his body warmed to the task. The wind began to pick up, and just as the string rose, the rain began to fall. He didn't notice when he started shaking, nor did he notice when the blisters on his hands burst, leaving bloody sores. He worked throughout the night, only stopping to wipe his hands clean on his pants, and when the first rays of light began to creep up behind him, he saw that the string was piled around his legs, almost up to his waist. He squinted up into the sky. His vision blurred for a moment, and he sh shook his head to clear it. He looked up again and blinked. There was something there. It was just a speck. A tiny black dot, but it was there. He smiled a little tired smile. Show me, Louis. Was that her breath on the back of his neck, or just the wind? Show me. Louis swallowed and licked his lips dry, let out a breath, and nodded. Little by little, the black dot in the sky began to grow imperceptibly at first, but more and more with each handful he pulled in. He was happy, the wind was warm, birds were singing, and Zoe was here. Suddenly Louis grabbed at his chest. Pain flared through him, and he lost his grip. He collapsed backwards into the string, his right arm raised up at the sky. All his work was lost, everything was gone, everything. He lay there, unable to do anything else, praying that the pressure in his chest would subside. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. He had no idea how long he lay there before he was able to once again stand up. He looked up, balancing on his legs that no longer belonged to him. The dot was there and he looked up amazement at the string. It wasn't floating off, it wasn't moving. He grinned. 
His left arm was now almost useless, dead, but the pressure in his chest had subsided. He found he only needed one arm to pull it anyway. He started work again, each moment bringing in fresh pain to his chest. He wanted to give up. He was ready to give up. He slid forward onto his knees, unable to stand any longer. The string hung from his arms and shoulders like a shawl. He was so tired. He felt her then, her lips against his neck, her arms about his chest, her words inside his mind. How much do you love me? He struggled to speak. His body was heavy and his eyes wanted to close, but still he had hold of the string. Through the pain and the lack of breath he worked, the shape coming closer and closer still, dark against the bright sky. He coughed, wincing with each spasm that shook his tired form. She held him tight, and he never stopped his work. Closer and closer. Show me. She kept him warm. And closer. Please. Thank you for that, Elliot. Thank you, round applause. So if you are just joining us, that was Heaven Sent by Matthew Bennett, read by Elliot Miller. What did we guys think? Obviously, I know what <laughs> Callum and Matthew felt, because, you know, the guinea pig author. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw this one out to Elliot. Yeah, we... You choked up a bit there, didn't you, Elliot? Not to say that any less professional, but I thought you were about <laughs> to burst into tears. How, how was that for you? Uh, it was tough. It was, I found it really, really emotional to read. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's very nerve-wracking for me, more so than previous times I've done this because I've never had the author well very rarely have I had the author sat like staring two feet away from me I could feel him like his eyes like in the side of my head like don't screw up me. don't screw I, up I, don't I was screw up. looking at you I, I weren't I weren't watching yeah, you, you had, you had yeah. Ian the other week though Ian was he was staring you down he was you know? he wasn't he was across the booth having a yeah, you had Amanda something. like you had Amanda right next to you as well I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I was writing. Yeah, sorry. writing. What do you think of Heaven Sent then, Kezia? That's not to say Ian or Amanda's writing was awful. That's not true. It was simply <laughs> the fantastic. The listener now just, going, we hate I Elliot. We hate no. him, man. Ne- never again. They're coming back, by the way. <laughs> Are you coming? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, give us your opinion. What do you think of Heaven Sent? I think though? I probably would have choked if I was reading it, to be honest, because I was sat here, like, stopping myself from well, crying. And I think when I saw Elliot start, I was like, and I was gone. I was just like, no, don't actually let tears fall. You've gone through a range of emotions tonight, haven't you? How? Bouts of laughter, and now you're <laughs> about to, like, cry. Oh, my eyes are. Yeah. Yeah. It's ups and downs, ups and downs, it's fine. Well, anyway, okay. How um, did you feel about it, Oliver? I thought it was a very powerful piece. It was. I mean, it was, it was, it was quite different about um, between writer's block yeah. and having sent, just simply because, obviously, writer's block was um, presented to us from... Um, the first person looking out onto the story, onto the characters, whereas this one was kind of like someone looking at something unfold. So it was it was an unknown. It was a narrator, I should say, looking at um, these two characters. You know, and yet at the same it time, it still feels like incredibly personal, perhaps more so than which you wouldn't book. expect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How did you find it with Elliot reading out your work, though, Matthew? I like it. It's cool listening to someone else read out my work. Yeah? yeah. Do you feel like a big-time celebrity? No, it's just nice to hear my words yeah. from someone so. else's voice. Yeah, awesome. And uh, coming back, Callum? Obviously, you've, bonjour. You've, you've, bonjour. <laughs> um, you've, you've probably heard this many times, you know, being oh, yeah. the guinea pig and everything. Yeah. Um, what do you take from Heaven Sent, then? Uh... It is scared me the first time I read it. Cause I, well, it's, it's a completely lovely story, and it did make me want to cry. And at the same point, I also saw this thing telling this guy, in the most loving way possible, to go outside and work himself to death. Yeah. Pretty much. And I took that more from it the first time I read it. And the more times I went back and reread it, the more I noticed how lovely of a story it was. But I could never get that underlying message. Mm. out of it mm. that she is still encouraging him to go out there and work himself to death really yeah. and it's that kind of thing that you love doing in your writing dad of just putting a little horrible twist in there for everyone well everything you should never ever say this is definitely what's yeah. going on because that makes a story boring because mm. stories are alive when you can discuss them when you finish a story or a film and there's still things to talk about then the story hasn't ended yeah. Yeah. well I think that's one of the benefits as well if you if you manage to achieve 
um, I guess a homegrown tip from Oliver here, but if you've managed, on the back of what you've just said there, Matthew, if you've managed to achieve at the end of whatever you are writing to maybe to have concluded the narrative structure, if you will, but maybe not the plot, maybe not yeah. the underlining issues, because, yeah. you yeah. know. I used to have loads of arguments with um, tutors here about ambiguity, <laughs> and they would always tell me, no, that's not what you're meant to do. They're all so lovely just, tutors, don't they? So that made me just double down harder <laughs> and make everything ambiguous. It, it, we... it is all about everybody takes something different from the story. And that's an important... No matter yeah. what story When you've is. got a really good story, everyone will see it differently. Yeah. Yeah. What I liked about Heaven Sent, really, was... Um, obviously, what, as you were saying at the earlier point in the show, about kind of like two things coming together, the old and new, um, and other pairings that may at first appear to be opposites... Um, which which will turn out to be you know perfect matches. Um, what I took from there is I took something as constant as the string to the degradation and obviously the decay of the man. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I kind of like that how something so small and so you know tiny so misguided or not misguided. Like uh, what's the word? Sorry, yeah, their that. significance. Um, having a constant over what is originally perceived as, as being strong. Yeah. Well, not necessarily anymore, but, you know, um, in this particular story, someone being strong, someone being dedicated, and then slowly decaying. Yeah, because it's, it's that his understanding of why the string appeared and hmm. what it meant only grew as he decayed and he... Went. went he faded, yeah. faded. His understanding grew, but he didn't. He decayed. Yeah. That made sense more no, than my head. No, <laughs> no, it made sense, no, it made sense to me. Don't worry, don't worry. Good. We, we, we um, got there with you, kids. I, I tend to... I've noticed two subjects that I always end up dealing with is loneliness and obsession. Uh, yeah. The first one was about loneliness and obsession. That one was about loneliness and obsession. We'll find out what the other stories are going to be about. Is it by um, any chance loneliness and obsession? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. I'm going yeah, to no, It's a very common thing <laughs> in my work, is that... Well, but that's, not, that's not absolutely anything wrong with that. Everyone does have... Yeah. A theme, a pattern. Um, it's uh, just my autism. It's that coming out. Because yeah. that's what my autism causes. Okay. And only looking at mm-hmm. it afterwards, like now, can I say, oh, that's what that's about. But even then, like, that's what you take from it. Yeah, but that's then, what I take. But, but then, take. like, I could take something completely yeah. different yeah. again. Yeah. It's like when you read a book, you imagine something different. Yeah. You imagine the story playing out differently to yeah. when... Else. But yeah, that's what I see when I look at it now. But also one interesting fact about that, it was written as a present for someone. Okay. Because I, I think when you're giving someone a present, you should give them something that no one else can ever give them. Mm. And that's what that was. Are we I'm allowed start to start writing we... stories as presents now. I know, it'd be so Or songs, stupid. me and Callum do it with birthday raps for yeah. people and stuff. Yeah, I'm, it'd be not, so I'm cheap not that talented. Rappers. Yeah. Stories yeah. and <laughs> poems and things like that, I can do. Yeah. Songs well, yeah, you should do, because it's nice. It's No one else will ever give them back. I know, I know he says nice, but I think more budget, and I'm like, wow, I won't have to buy any more <laughs> presents. Cheap present. I, I am, yeah, skint students, here we go, we've got the perfect present. Here's a yeah. tip here on a go. post-it note. <laughs> so Christmas is around the corner, guys. Um, <laughs> you know what we want. <laughs> anyway, I think that deserves another little round of applause, everyone. Um, we are going to move on to our third song. Um, but do join us after the break as we talk about the autos, uh, sorry, Autism Got Talent 2017 that FMA and 12 Gauge participated in um, and we also get two more lovely readings from our Elliot um, Kevin and Flip the Dog yeah. looking forward to it absolutely, can't wait it's awesome. gonna be good. he hasn't got a concussion so this is good <laughs> um, but before we do we're, gonna, we're going to introduce the song so this is FMA 12 Gauge Unstoppable um, who would like to take the lead on this one? Callum, Callum? I, I will yes um, this is like one of our poppy songs. It, it turned into a poppy song. It was originally a song which I wrote, and I pretty much wrote it as being kind of my bragging song, but not. You, you know how every rapper kind of has that song where it's like, I've got a Lamborghini, I've got this, I've got that. Mm, mm, Whereas yes. this was more along the lines of, I am a force that is just going to completely decimate everything. Like, I'm going to stand on a stage. And the crowd by the end of that gig will know my name, will love my songs, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop that. And then when I did it to my dad, he turned around and went, I like everything but the second verse. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and then, Constructive criticism. Yeah, and then decided to, to write you know. a second verse for it, and that turned into this song that you're about to hear. 
Awesome. Awesome. Mm. Cool. Uh, just to outline, he's not talking about world destruction. He's just talking about destruction of people's minds. Wait, are yeah. you talking about world destruction? I Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're probably talking about world destruction. It's just talking Slowly, about world destruction. Slowly, we're going to start by audience by audience. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that's what it's going on. Right. Yeah. Audience yeah. by audience? Yeah. He's talking about his belief in himself. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> I wasn't talking about world destruction. He I said mean. it. <laughs> well, well, mainly like the world will, when I wrote the song, will not be able to stop loving me. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Awesome. I wish I had that talent, you know. <laughs> I don't don't put yourself talent. down, Oliver. Well, you were doing it. I'm anyway, loud. guys, this is um, <laughs> apart from me and Kessie, yeah arguing amongst one another. This is FMA plus 12 gauge and unstoppable. From the heart of Uclan, this, this is Pulse Radio. 
Hi, welcome back. You are joining us here at Story Corner, your eight to nine but not so <laughs> show where we talk about narratives and also rap. Yeah, rap. Well, tonight, yeah. Yeah, well, tonight sure. we talk about rap. We might continue. We can add it to our CV of shows and stuff, can't we? Yeah. Awesome. So you are joined by myself, Oliver, and my co host, Kezia. Say hi, Kezia. Hi, Kezia. Wonderful. <laughs> and you're also joined by our lovely guests tonight. We've got FMA plus 12 gauge. That's Matthew Bennett and Callum Bennett. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hola. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> And Elliot. I, I was getting there. No, you weren't. I was. I was going to say that. And you've got Story Corner's very own Elliot Miller. That's fine. I mean, I was forgetting I was here too. So <laughs> this is that concussion <laughs> from the whiteboard. It's, it's really starting to kick in. I don't yeah. <laughs> so we, we guys, we have been on air for an hour and 31 minutes. This is a new record for Story Corner, isn't it? It is. Yes. I think we were on for like less than an hour and 30 last week. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is around the pause. <laughs> No, Oliver doesn't no. think so. <laughs> yeah. We just broke a record. I'm proud of that. Yeah. We'll put that in them like fingers that you get we awards. Are we going to get a trophy? <laughs> yeah, we'll create our own. Nice. Yeah. yeah, we don't have the money for a trophy, so. Oh. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Anyway, guys, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about um, Autism Got Talent, the 2017 contest. You guys participated in it, didn't you guys? Yes, yeah. we did. Would you like to give us a bit more information about the actual um, the talent show and, and how it came about? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Autism's Got Talent is um, a, 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 an event that's set up by the Anna Kennedy online charity. Um, Anna Kennedy has two autistic uh, boys, and like when they were growing up, she had no help or anything, so she created the help for everyone. Yeah. Mm. And she's created this amazing um, showcase event. It's not a competition or anything, mm -hmm. where people from all over the country are invited to perform. And all you have to do is send in like a video or something, and if if you think you're good, then uh, you'll go on. And it's not like it's not about the best people in the world or anything. It's just about if you love what you're doing, yeah. really. Um, so if you love what you're doing and you want to kind of like have the support and give the support at the same time, uh, well, not yeah. If 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 say if you love telling jokes and you've got a video of you telling jokes and you've got autism, you just send them that video, and if they like it, they'll be like, oh, that's cool. Uh, do you know what I mean? You don't need to be the best comedian in the world or anything, or mm. like the best yeah. rapper or musician or anything like that. And it's it about... isn't just limited to one thing. thing. No, it's uh, dancing, ma magicians, all sorts. It's, if you've got a skill and you enjoy doing something, just get in touch if you're autistic. Yeah. But yeah, so when Callum turned 18, I wrote a birthday rap as a surprise for him. Oh. Can, oh. can you recite it now? No, I hate that song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. I really hate it now. I, I, it I, I loved it when I first wrote it. I thought, oh, this is the best present ever. Um, but yeah, I'm sick of it now. But anyway, I sent them that. I sent Callum, them that video, feel? and um, I feel sick. They liked the video. Uh, they liked the video, um, but also around the same time, we'd been shortlisted for Britain's Got Talent, hadn't we? Yeah. And we've created a rap for them, um, and we ended up amalgamating the two pieces together to create like a five, six minute piece, and yep. uh, that's what we ended up performing there. So we came out, and I pretended it was Callum's 18th birthday. On, at the, the crowd song so, happy yeah, birthday so sang happy birthday <laughs> and then I started this rap and then the rap evolves doesn't it Callum yeah, yeah, it and then it transforms and and into this uh, once I finish the birthday rap it transforms into Callum like talking to me and then we uh, do this like two and a half minute piece where um, it's all about the structure of it so I like yeah. do two lines Callum does two lines and I do one and a half lines Callum does one and a half until like by the end of it like we, it's like proper close together the switching and joining the words and stuff so yeah it was really awesome and it's such a cool experience. I've never yeah. felt so welcome anywhere. I tend to go into social situations and um, mm. I throw myself in head first, but I'm always like, I'm going to end up saying something stupid here. But uh, there, there was none of that. It was like, I just felt comfortable. It was such a nice Yeah, you were, saying, you were saying before how social situations can sometimes be challenging. Yeah, yeah. But this one, on the other hand... It was different. Yeah, we were yeah. all sat making silly noises, weren't oh, we? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, it we was were. really weird. Because I like, I, at home, this is a bit of an embarrassing thing, but I would okay, just be cool. sat there making weird noises and Callum's like he has to deal with it yeah, um, yeah. but we were at Autism's Got Talent and everyone's doing the exact same thing and then so I'm just funny. sat there next to him like, headphones like, headphones in by any chance oh no no I was just sat there completely yeah. like but okay it, it was such a nice feeling was that because it was like whoa it I, it's not just me that does that it was really cool it was really yeah. accepting it was such a nice thing and when I say I sit at home and make weird noises I don't just like sit in a corner and be weird <laughs> don't worry like, <laughs> They're called, they're called dad noises. <laughs> oh, the whole world knows about them. So you're, you're, right. awesome. you're fine. Cool. We won't hold it again. But yeah, no, it was just, it was so nice to meet people who were so yeah. similar to me. 
and so similar to Callum as well because Callum's not been diagnosed but he has many many traits that I've got yeah, as I've well got, yeah. mm. um, but he has his main one is dyslexia and it's really weird he switches things in his head mm. yeah um, Six know, has become nine. Yeah. You Not know, just dates aren't yeah. good. I know the feeling. Yeah. Instru- he switches instructions. He switches dates. He switches letters, and left and right. It's really cool to look at. It must be annoying in Callum's head, though. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I totally know how you feel. Yeah. I'm surprised I'm allowed to drive. To be honest, I can, I can imagine. I'm surprised that yeah. you're, you're allowed radio. to drive. <laughs> I'm a good driver. <laughs> Honestly, with my left and rights and stuff, I, 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 I still like, do the um, letter, the thing with oh, the L's on your thumbs. Yeah, he taught I still, me. I still do that. While he driving. taught me um, something because playing computer games like left bumper, right bumper, and he told me that. Yeah, and that's how shoot I do is it. our shoot is our. So that right is shoot, like, right is shoot. Exactly. It's um, all about little tricks. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Autism Got Talent is such an amazing event. We will be performing there again in November, November the twenty third. It's like a road show at the Flora Pavilion in awesome. New Brighton. Awesome. Um, awesome. But yeah, it's it's so fantastic, and the charity is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and Anna Kenny and Anna Kennedy has given us so many opportunities and stuff, and it's uh, stuff so, that she didn't really need to do. Yeah, as well, yeah. like give us a quote for our album and yeah. stuff like that. She's just helped us out. So if um, if going forward, if if there are anyone who may suffer from um, dyslexia mm. or autism, yeah, um, who may want to partake or share in this great community that you're describing to us um how would they go about maybe getting involved where uh, would they look you know well uh, just check the anna kennedy online uh website out it's called that anna kennedy online.com yep. okay cool, cool um nice. yeah and you don't quite realize what's around you until you start looking for it um yeah. so i'm sure one of the things we've noticed like when we've come out with the album we've had people with autism like getting in touch yeah. and going oh i didn't realize like there'd be like two autistic rappers or whatever even though Cal's not autistic but you know what I mean and getting in touch with me saying I didn't realise this and yeah you just need to look I think it's fine in the community isn't it yeah yeah. well I think it's great I think I think um... because I used to believe that I was alone completely alone but mm. I'm not alone it's just I didn't know that the people were there and I'm sure it's like that for a lot of people out there oh, yeah. yeah I think it is I think whether it be um, autism whether it be dyslexia or really any kind of um disability that hinders any kind of issue though not just like yeah and to be honest there's, I know there's communities the thing, like, the thing, yeah the thing people. that kind of annoys me when people say like disabilities is always looked on as a bad thing yeah yeah and like some of like the greatest people had something oh, yeah. be sexy and stuff and it's not all, it's not a bad thing it's just looked upon as a bad thing because that's what society's told us well we're not perfect you know yeah, yeah, everyone's, no one's perfect so um but I, I I like what you're saying. I like the fact that um, you were able to kind of combine what you do and what you love to do with a community of people. And the amazing thing to take away, which I would take away from it if I was in your shoes, would be the fact that you have got other people who share your um, share your difficulties. You yeah. Know, who are coming up to you and going, well, you know, wow. You know, it's not just. I mean, yeah, you probably do get all sorts of great, you know, audiences. You get people who come up with you with different things, you know, and people who come up with you who aren't autistic, you know. But the fact that you are also reaching out to that community with the rap music. Yeah. Which some people wouldn't even see, you know. It's so unique, it's so refreshing. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that's what I think when you get a chance to showcase it like you have done and will do again, um, I think it deserves a bit of a round of applause, don't you guys, yeah? Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. So you heard it here on Story Corner, guys. If you are interested in getting involved in the Autism Got Talent 2018 showcase, remember it's not a competition, then please do get in touch or search just on Google Anna Kennedy online and it's all that information on there. And if you do end up going, you'll see FMA in 12 gauge again. So that's pretty exciting. Not before coming on Story Corner, right? Yes, definitely. And how do we do that, Kezia? Which part do you want? All of it. You can contact us at our email address which is storycornerradio at outlook.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Or, Oliver, Sorry, yeah. what's our Facebook? Pulse Radio at Story Corner. There you go. So you come on the show, tell us that you're going to the Autism I've Got Talent yes, show, definitely. case, and then, and, then, and then go there. I think that's, I think that's a great, great trade-off, yeah? Yeah. 
Definitely. As long as they kind of like plug us as well. Yeah. yeah. You guys have got to plug us. We okay. plugged you. Okay. Do the deal. Forever. The Forever. deal. <laughs> we got to plug us now. It's unwritten. Come it's, on. It's, it's, it's there. Right, guys, we're going to move on and we're going to move on to um, the last reading from Elliot Miller. He's going to do two consecutive readings. So the first one is going to be Kevin. And then you're going to move on to Flip the Dog, aren't you? That is correct. Would yes. you like to discuss Kevin after his read Kevin? We could discuss both think, of them after we've yeah. read both of them. Okay. Because they're very, because they are very short, you know. They're yeah, super short. Yeah, you know, we, we can just discuss them as one big one. We should point out that Elliot has done a lot of practice with Flip the Dog. Um, and he's uh, going to try his very much hardest to do it, you know. And do bear with us and bear with him because it is not very easy performing live on radio. And so, you know, we thank people to have a bit of patience, right? We do. Right. So without further delay, this is Matthew Bennett with Kevin and Flip the Dog, performed by Elliot Miller. In a solar system on the most infinite outskirts of the universe, there was a very naughty planet called Kevin. Kevin had always been obsessed by the stars that hung like diamonds in the darkness around him. He would have given anything to shine like them. Kevin was barely old enough to have his own moon, let alone be spinning out of orbit. Yet like a shooting star, he danced across the universe, hopping across black holes, weathering cosmic storms, and riding the waves of supernovas until one day he arrived. One million years later, he returned. Quasars and crumpets, his ever-glowing mother said when she noticed him trying to slink back into orbit. What have you been doing? You're covered pole to pole in dark matter. I'm sorry, Mummy. I wanted to be a star. Kevin's shadowly shook and consonants formed across his surface. But when I got there, I found they were just like us. His mother caressed him with sunlight. Silly Kevin. I know it's hard to see, but you are a star. Everyone's a star to someone. It just depends on where you're looking from. Kevin thought for a moment and smiled. Thanks, Mum. And the universe went on spinning. So this final one is Flip the Dog. Please bear with me. I... <laughs> <laughs> Flip was a dog, a very happy dog, and he was a very happy dog because he got to spend all day doing what he loved best. Flip loved to flip, from the very moment that he woke up to the very second that he fell asleep. Flip, flip, flippity flip. But this flipping wasn't to everyone's taste. Next door to Flip lived a fluffy cat named Fluff. Fluff couldn't stand it when Flip went flippity flipping. Fluff was always saying, stop that flip. I really don't like it when you flip like that flip. But Flip would ignore Fluff, and Fluff, without fail, would fluff up in frustration. One day, Flip thought to ask, Why do you get so fluffy, Fluff? I fluff, because you flip, Flip. And when you flip, Flip, it flipping flops me up. Flip flipped, and ignored the frustrated and flabbergasted, and fluffed up fluffy Fluff. Fluff furiously flailed in frustration, then flopped to the floor. Stop flipping, flipping, Flip. Flip didn't fault as he flopped, flew, and flipped. I flip because I, Flip, love to flip. And if you don't flipping like it, Flop, then you can flipping fluff off. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that is awesome! You did it! You did it! Yay! Yes. Excellent work. Those went wrong every time I practiced it. And <laughs> I Get it right on the night. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> So, Kevin and Flip the Dog is obviously a lot more shorter pieces than Writer's Block and Heaven's Scent. Um, tell our wonderful listeners, um, why, why, why did you write them? What Was they for an exercise or was there just It was be- for two uh, uh, short story slam where you needed three 200 uh, word stories. Oh. I like working with limitations. I find when you get given limitations, you create better work than if you're given just allowed to do whatever you want. Is this the same short story slam that... Uh, Maya Adelina yes. won. Yeah, she yeah she won. Yes. She was awesome, awesome. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just made it. I didn't realize we didn't ask, did we? No, no, we didn't. We should have researched. Yeah, so these were well, for the years before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what they're for. Okay, perfect. Um, and I noticed how they may not necessarily um, follow with your um, well, theme. What was it? Loneliness and obsession. Loneliness and obsession. Well, flip doesn't stop flipping. That's obsession. And Kevin runs away on his own <laughs> because he doesn't feel like everyone else. I totally missed that. There so you there you go. go what did you think deep. of the story there, Kathy? Go on, let's, let's put you on the spot. I really like them. I kind of, I took away from Kevin, like, the whole message about you're always special to someone. Yeah. Like, doesn't matter really how, what everybody thinks. There's someone out there that thinks you're special. It's important to remember, people forget it. 
Yeah, and they, they're like, oh, I want to be like that person. And it's like, no, but you're you. Unique. Yeah. yeah. And it's important. It's and I really like the idea of a really naughty planet called Kevin. Just that sentence in <laughs> itself is just awesome. <laughs> in this solar system, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, how did you find it there, um, Elliot? Uh, the flip the dog was really, really difficult to read, but I... Was it fun to read, though? If I wasn't under pressure, then perhaps, yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I sort of took... It's a sort of... I saw it in a sort of similar light to um, to Kevin in that it's about, like, being individual and true to yourself and in the sort of sense that the two sort of contrast. So, um, I'm sorry, Kevin is very much about, like, the support you get from, like, people around you and people who are always going to be there to support you. Whereas Flip the Dog is sort of... a not necessarily a more powerful message, but a sort of contrasting but similar message in that it's about people trying to perhaps stop you from doing what you want to do and you need to have the the strength to sort of persevere with that anyway. I think that's a better I think that's a better insight than what I could do. Yeah. That is. <laughs> Elliot's taking your role tonight. He doesn't know how to do the mix board, I still reign. <laughs> For and now. What, and what did we think? Now. What did we as as the guinea pig? As the guinea pig in this situation. Um <laughs> I just I just find them both one of them made me smile and the other just made me laugh and flip the dog just made me laugh. Yeah, you were you <laughs> were so sat much. off to the side. Oh yeah, to, like, <laughs> yeah. Hold the laughter. Back. Any time I see someone attempt to read that, even if it's you, it's like even if it's my dad and he's reading it properly, I just sit there and I'm there like one word. There's going to be one word that they can't do. And <laughs> hey, can I just ask Matthew then? Um, why flip the dog? Why written like that? Why why purposely made to be a tongue twister? It I just enjoyed. I just started and it just grew, um, flip and fluff, and then it was like, oh right, okay, and then it just, yeah, it just grew. I didn't have when I write. I don't always have an idea where I'm going, and right, okay. that was one of the ones where I didn't have any idea where I was going. It just went. Yeah, it just happened. See, flip. I'm totally opposite as a writer. I Same need with Kevin. To know. No, yeah. but with some, I have to plan them out like mad. Uh, yeah. There are some which are magical, and these two were magical. They just happened. Uh, See, writer's block that took ages to write, and so did Heaven Sent. But these two didn't. No. no. See, I'm I'm quite a case of I have to kind of rein my characters in because my characters kind of go off and wanders and do their own thing and go. No, I don't. I want to go here, and I'm like, come back. You're <laughs> doing this. You're not doing that. You're going to do my thing. And I talk, Poor characters. My characters go off and wanders. I'm oh. like, don't do that. I don't want you to do that. Oh. Well, perfect. That was um, Kevin and Flip the Dog by Matthew Bennett, read by our own Elliot Miller, and I think another round of applause. <laughs> Guys, we are slowly running out of time because I really don't think we can push past the two-hour <laughs> mark, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit straight to the last song by FMA and 12 Gauge, which is Swan Song, um, and I believe, Callum, you've got a bit to say about this shit? Yeah, um, this is possibly the most personal song that is on the album, I think, but we both wanted to do a verse that was how we felt at the time of writing that song in the truest way that we could say it. So, this is Swan Song. Thank you. Here I am, 38 years a man, 38 years to become this man, and one day I'll be nothing but footprints in the sand, and I don't know if I can, carry on standing in the land, I'm damned, I keep offering you my hand, it took an entire life's man to understand that, a million mistakes mixed with a million, billion, trillion apologies, no difference makes you and I are not the same, none of our signups fire the same, segregating, ignore the strangers, too much change, I'm on the last draft of the last page, and it's almost all the time, it's ticking now, now I see the smiles of what they are, they're just crooked mouths, speaking empty words from empty heads, to go to country in nothing and casting doubt Looks like I'ma have to lift this one out But now my body is failing And now my mind has begun nailing And I'm sick of this sickness And all the nightmares I've created Dreams have faded Replaced with an emptiness And I hate but in my emptiness There is hate I remember its taste I got one go That's the crush of those who oppose Destroy them all with the flow Of the dark solid bones If I got one floor It's that I can quit on this road I made my choice Sounds my voice This is all I live for never wanted to be normal now i'm 19 and rap has got a grip on me not every bully 
you pulled me apart The pieces are colliding and igniting a spark A fire in this dark heart My dreams are not comprehended by dreamers My dream is to have Reuben with a beaming grin when I rap Stepping in force of the word that can rip soul Taking it back, breaking the backs I'm real land of a planet So can all skip and jump to Uranus And kick it, face it for wordplay You're too far ahead Seems to be more up and down than the seesaw This thesis leaves you in pieces Is E19? Birds and bees wanna breeze in past it I'm grafted from granite Honestly, the few bitch with me and my mum man, damn it A calamity happened to Callum and V 400 past Now I gotta kick my own ass again And my smart again Guess I'm a bit time to ram right past it From the heart of you, clan, this, this is Pulse Radio. And welcome back, guys. That was FMA and 12 Gauge with Swan Sunk. Thank you very much. Round of applause, everybody. <laughs> we are approaching our two hour mark, so this is the new story corner at two hours. <laughs> Untested. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is literally, the record. This is the literally record setter right here, trend setting everybody. Woo. At eight minutes to ten on a Friday evening, I'd love to be here. How are you guys doing? How are you holding up, Kezia? I'm good. I'm not actually knackered this week because I've not been working today, so it's all good. All's good. All good. <laughs> and guys, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Are you all good? Cool. Yeah, it's yeah. been fun. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun. Enjoyed yeah. myself. Yes. Come back. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. That's how we get them. I love you asked them on air at a point when they couldn't really say no. To be fair, I, asked, I did <laughs> ask them beforehand, so I asked them like two minutes ago. This is just if we'd have said no, you'd have just asked us then on air. Yeah, yeah, we would have asked you. Yes. Yeah, it's all good. Contract. Elliot, you coming back? <laughs> it's called peer pressure, guys. This is how we do it. Awesome. <laughs> Another person who says awesome. Wait, no, that was Matthew. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something you should... Out on <laughs> well, actually, we're gonna we're gonna do the next thing. You're gonna take a bit of a lead on this, aren't you, Kezia? You know, because we're gonna talk about the Great, Great Northern, Northern Expo, Expo. Yes, and we we're also gonna be asking FMA and Twelve Gauge here, um, obviously, who have just released a new album yes. called Parental Advisory. Should we talk about the album first? Ow. Thank you for that, Elliot. That <laughs> Thank first you, Elliot. Should we talk about the al- album <laughs> first and then go on to? Yeah, I think Expo? we should do. Yeah, I think we. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, you've got that new album out, yep. Parental Advisory. Yep. What do you see happening with the future of it? Well, we uh, with the album. Yes. Uh, well, we're going to promote it for as long as possible, and uh, we're open for gigs and stuff now. Uh, yeah. Um, but we do have another album lined up. Okay. Uh, that we future. need to work on because this first album is like the first half of the story, and we need to tell the second half of the story. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Part one and part two. Is yep. it is, is it going to be called Parental Advisory? Part no, it's called Matt- Matt- versus Twelve Gauge. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, it's a bit of a competition going on, mm-hmm. right? Yes, isn't it? Mm. Showdown. You'll need to listen mm. to the album to understand what we're talking about. But if you've yeah. heard the album, you'll understand the name for the second one. But yeah, it's downloadable from Bandcamp. Uh, and we're on social media, FMA 12 Gauge, everywhere. Shameful. FMA 12 Gauge, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> FMA 12 Gauge, everywhere. <laughs> Here at Story Corner. Yeah. yeah. No, guys, that's awesome. Uh, and the Great Northern Expo, because yeah. Great Northern Expo. So... We're playing there. Sorry, should I have said that? I was about to ask you that. Okay, go on. I was about to say. So, the Great Nova Expo held right here at UCLan. You guys are performing. Yeah, we're supposed to. We're opening the festival. Yeah. Um, What what day are you opening it? On the Monday. The Monday, the 12th. 12th. Yes. 12th. Yeah. Uh, I think at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not sure, we're going to be performing the album uh, again. To get yourself down there. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's at the Media Factory. yeah, and that's all I know at the minute. I need to get, get working Don't worry, on it. like yeah. we are actually having the guy who's organising it on next week because, as everybody knows, my film is going to be. Oh, she won't premiered. stop. She won't stop talking about it. We've been on what? <laughs> like three weeks now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like proud of the fact that. Like, yeah, no, you should be proud. I'm only me. messing. I can't wait to see this film. You're just jealous because you didn't get to go. Well, Oof. yeah, but I get to go to Aesthetica, so... Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. I don't want to go. Yeah, you, I whatever. wanted to go to Poland. You I didn't, didn't want to go to Poland, either. <laughs> this whatever. is what happens. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Happens. This is just a normal show. <laughs> Pretty much. This is, when, this is when we start to squabble. This um, is just normal, Kezia and Oliver. 
So yeah, got the Great Northern Expo. Um, do we know if it's going to? Actually, we probably should save this for next week because I was going to say, is there yeah, people Richard, purchase Richard's tickets or is it a free event? No, it's, it's free. I think. Okay. Well, okay. Richard's going to be here next week talking about it, and my actress is going to be here to give us all a little insight. Yes. Well, I think we should. Um, so yeah go on to the prompt but just on that note guys if you are wanting to listen to the album Parental Advisory by FMA and 12 Gauge then do check them out on Bandcamp and you can also find them on social media which is under the same name FMA plus 12 Gauge and give them a like a follow and while you're at it you might as well just follow Story Corner as well yeah, yeah. that one was shameful that one definitely <laughs> shameful they'll, they'll be plugging you know. us exactly so yeah. guys as in always with Story Corner tradition we do a writing tip and a writing prompt and obviously, as you know, the writing tip is to give our young, you know, um, wonderful... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Young. There are other people that aren't just young who are starting okay, out. Okay. I, I Beginning writers. Beginning Thank amateur you. novice or yeah. even experienced. Thank you. Sorry, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, before I was rudely interrupted, um, they give out a tip who kind of gives <laughs> us some worldwide experience and from their own perspective. And then the prompt is a one-word association. So if you have a story, if you have a poem, if you have prose writing, or if you can manage to turn it into a monologue, a script, long a or rap? small, or a rap, yeah, even a rap song, um, then please do get in touch with us here at Story Corner, and you can email us at storycornerradio at outlook.com, or Kezia. He stole it. He stole it. Or you can go to Paul Radio Story Corner on Facebook. Wonderful. So I'm going to throw this over to Story Matthew, who is going to give us um, his... Writing tip and writing prompt, aren't you, Matthew? Yes, my writing prompt is titled... Right, okay. And uh, my writing tip is time is your best friend. Uh, and patience. Don't ever expect anything to be done. Don't, like, just do some words and then be like, yeah, that's it's done. It's not. Wait, and then come back to it. And okay. then wait, and come back to it. And then wait, and come back to it. It's a good job you understood, uh, explained that, because when you first said it, I thought, you'd like, you know, be patient. And don't expect it to be a huge success straight away. Like one minute, oh, I've written it. Where's the Oscar? No, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no. To get the it best story that you can, well, you need time. Oh, yeah, it's like an equation. Yeah, and the more time you have, the better the story is. And would you like to elaborate a bit more on the prompt um, for title? title? Just title. The word title. The word title. Yeah, is it a title of a story? Is it a title of a person? I thought it was an interesting word. Well, it is. Mm, I will. I'm going to look forward Ooh. to seeing the word that comes from mm. that. Exactly. Um, and going over to our uh, 12 gauge very young Hi. Callum Bennett how are you doing Callum? I'm doing good you? yeah good good. good. have you enjoyed yourself? I have yes perfect perfect mm. can't refute that now um, <laughs> would you like to give us a, your writing tip and writing pom- prompt please? yeah um, <laughs> well my tip is hoard as much as you can even if that is from the first thing that you've written and you think it's terrible to the thing you wrote yesterday and you thought it was amazing, anything can be altered and anything can be reworked and reworded and morphed into anything, really. So hoard as much as you can and just carry on writing. And your prompt, please. Impact. Perfect. Have you got an elaboration on that? or um, Anything you do should have an impact on someone. Oh, okay. Who listens to it, who reads it, who does anything to it. If it's at least one person who is impacted by it, then you've done a good job. So would you agree about saying maybe a situation that impacts upon a bunch of characters or yeah. a bunch of characters that may have an impact on other characters or a situation itself? Yeah, or even the story impacting on someone who is outside of the story or in anything, just as long as there is impact in it. Is there's always consequence to something, so someone can always take something away from what you've done. Breaking the fall fall there, you know, mm. impact upon the audience itself. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you that for catching <laughs> on. And thank you that, Matthew and Callum, for our writing tip. So you've heard it first, uh, here first, guys. We've Tom got... Tide. Yeah, we are. It's uh, first... <laughs> first prompt is title. Um, so that could be a title of a story, title of a person, title of a place, you know, use your imagination. And then obviously... Um, patience have a lot of patience don't expect um the story to maybe come together so yeah. quickly um keep revisiting it um and and yeah and just grow it and work on it that way and then from callum we have impact which is obviously just explained impact upon characters impact upon audience or impact upon a situation either on yourself or on other external people and his tip was don't get rid of anything hoard away you know File it, 
put it save up in Google or back up in cloud or whatever they call it yeah you know yeah, definitely but just save everything because you never know you never know you might just be on to a winner there light bulb moment well thank you guys thank you very much for that <laughs> right we're going to wrap up so we're going to wrap up and we're going to kind of introduce so next week please join us here at Story Corner for your not 8 to 9 slot <laughs> that's it's a really eight, cool name 8 to <laughs> I think I just Whenever. went it. I think I just went it. Not the eight to nine slot, but airing at eight to nine. Um, <laughs> where it starts only at eight. It's fine. Our very own Kezia will be taking the lead. I will. I will. So next week's episode, it's going to be all Kezia. It is. It's going to be looking at things from the actress side of point side of things and yeah. what actresses look at, look at for scripts and the motivation in writing, what they find. Don't worry. I know if you're anyone who just listens to the show for my voice. I will still be here talking. Who listens for your voice? Everybody. <laughs> but it's going to be a Kezia-led one, so she's going to do yeah. more of the talking and give me a bit of a break. You know, my poor voice, my poor lovely voice. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. Who have you got? Who have you recruited on for next week? I have got an actress, a little actress named Sophie Coward, who I've known for a few years now, who did um, something with me in during my Bachelors. And she's also going to be the voice of one of my characters in my film for the Northern Expo. Wonderful. And we've got Richard and I can't, I'm really sorry Richard, I can't actually say yours. Alberston. Yes. Richard you go. Alberston. There we who go, yeah. is the organ- one of the organisers for the Great Northern Expo and he's going to be plugging that away and telling us all about that and what's going on and times and things. I'm actually really proud because this is like a whole episode that has been you know put together by Kezia and I'm just really looking forward to it just taking it back I want to I'm going to be sitting in your seat but over here because you won't touch the mixing board I don't want to I don't want to be blamed if anything breaks (laughs) you know I'm going to watch I'm going to watch Kezia in all her splendour speaking of breaking things remember to vote on our question yes oh my god yes I nearly forgot so if you believe it is my fault about everything then or or Kezia then vote away or if you believe Elliot is to blame for all the faults... Wait, comment, what? Hold comment. On. What? You're in the vote. Oh. <laughs> you broke board. the whiteboard. He, he's experiencing memory loss. The whiteboard broke me. Okay, I'm a victim. Comment. Please comment hey. on our Facebook page. And if you have got anything to show us, or if you've got anything that you want to record or read out, or even have Elliot, who isn't suffering from brain damage, read out for you... <laughs> promise please, I'm not. <laughs> then, Send it. Yes, please do get in touch with us at Story Corner Radio at Outlook.com or visit our Facebook page, which is Pulse Radio at Story Corner. Stealing things. Otherwise, I think that's about it, isn't that it? That is about it. Wow, that's amazing. We've had such a great show. Have you enjoyed it? I have. Have you guys enjoyed it? Yeah, thank you very much yeah, for having us on. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Awesome. Right, guys, um, until next week, keep on writing. And this has been Oliver and Kezia here at Story Corner. Night. From the heart of Uclan, this, this is Pulse Radio.